Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. He has a lot of problems. Struggle to be top five in points at the end of the season. Wow. You don't bleach your, your hair, you're, you're a sellout. Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Moto Aftermath Show. This is episode number 259. Wow, didn't shout out, Stu. Didn't change that. Yep. Yep. Stu, rookie number here. Sick. Uh, we are back in studio. I'm your host, Travis. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Got my two co-hosts here with me, Justin and Cole. What hey, up? boys. What's up, bitches? Nice to see you all again. We're going to wrap up Detroit. Me and Cole were there. We'll swap some stories. Justin was not. Lame. <laughs> I, hate I hate Detroit. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best. No, ever. no. Nightlife wasn't great. It, I hate it. <laughs> Dude, uh, Weren't you in Climax? It was not. Yeah, yeah. Did you Last go home? Time. Well, he was there Friday. Oh, I was there Friday night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll swap some stories. I got... Oh, do I got a story for you guys. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, it, was fuck, it was the weirdest fucking things that were happening to me at Supercross. But anyway, um, we got new sponsor for the show here, so we'll get into that a little bit. We're going to talk 250s. We got uh, a rant about futures. Uh, we got some AMA changes that they're doing with the tracks here, which is interesting. Um, we've got a Deegan Danger Zone because we had East Coast firing up here, so Deegan was oh, there. Oh, that's already been started on right? people Oh, dude, you, every bro. fucking... I mean, and now, bro, man, you got some people that are like like hating on you hard oh, dude do you like the kid who's telling me that deegan's lawyer is gonna have a good time with me for making money off their name and i literally in the comments was like you think we fucking make money like you're an idiot i just like the one dude what does he call d's nuts or whatever who's uh, literally no, just going at you. nuts he's going at you hard at <laughs> every know. turn i don't know who he is dude he it's hates great. you that's he, great i think he like legitimately hates you that would be fun i gotta get caught up on the comments oh also. bro it's bro, great literally uh friday night i was starting to get tuned up a little bit and i was oh, like i know i was literally like all oh, these comments are going to get so good because they were just fucking firing off on there and i'm like this is going to be great because i don't give a shit what i say right is now. that what you meant by in that group text that like i'm gonna fire off on these deegan fanboys yes okay I thought literally yeah, like yes. look i was super confused because i knew you were at the casino or greek down or whatever the yeah. fuck you were doing and you were like, I'm gonna fire off on these Deegan fanboys. I'm like scratching my head. I was like, Are there a lot of Deegan shirts in Greek town? No. I was thinking the same thing. Like, I thought no. you were getting like approached by like a bunch of teenagers. No. And yeah. I'm like, what are you talking no. about? Yeah, I was no, like, no, these kids no. aren't even in the bar. I'm no, like, how are was, they getting in here? Yeah, no, no, no. We um He was at Weenie Hut Jr. No, we uh, had we had <laughs> Shark Bar. No, we had walked around the casino a little bit, had a couple drinks, and uh and we're just like we were just hanging out in the room because I was like, dude, I gotta be up at six thirty tomorrow. Like I don't need to be too fired up here. And I was like, but I'm starting to get a little tuned up and these guys are firing off on the Deegan video and the two fifty East video and I'm just like, Oh, this is gonna be great. And then I fell asleep. So dude, it is nothing happened. It is wild though that there's like him and then there's this other kid. I don't know. Oh, there's know. a few of them, man. They it's literally okay. now are go they're going at you at, at like every video. The the dude it's wild. the dude that was talking about the lawyer literally commented two different places about the lawyer. And I'm like, <laughs> whatever, man. Here's what they're gonna do. They're gonna send a cease and assist. And like they wouldn't even have done that and, because and, we would then, have to make so much money. I was gonna say, that. and then what are we gonna do? I'm gonna pull it off the fucking shop. Okay, great. That's that's the sum total of what's gonna happen. They're not just gonna come right out and fucking sue me for what? Because I we put your name even... there. Great, cool. We'll remove it. No problem. Oh, you want a part of the funds? Well, I'm in the whole negative twenty five dollars I paid for the fucking shirt for me to wear. So I think you owe me money then fucking stupid. yeah man dude they're they're something special bro and this is, it's just funny to me because like when i get just bored they're young man when i get bored i look at them and i just go these dudes are like so obsessed they are look we talk about that stuff all the time how bad the fans are but have you ever looked through a comment section in like a big time sport oh yeah oh, yeah. Dude, the oh, toxicity yeah, it's is crazy it's terrible and people are like this is the first time we've ever seen anything like that in our sport so it's yeah. everybody's like losing their mind Matt Matt Mitchell even texted me last week and he was like, "Dude, Moto fans are like the fucking worst." He's like, "I don't even understand." Dude, this has actually been this happening. Work. This has been happening with the UFC lately. Like the main commentator John Anik like threatened to quit, and he's got he makes a lot of money. He's like yeah. the next to Rogan. He's the lead guy on the broadcast group. And there was a fight between everybody knows him, Sean Strickland and Drake uh, Duplessis. He's my new favorite and fighter. And everybody was like going ham because like they wanted Strickland to win. And he was talking about how like he thought he lost and the reasons why. 
And people were like going on Dreykus Duplessis saying like, oh, you should die and all this kind of because he won the fight. And like, and it's like, dude, like MMA fans are so toxic. He's like, I, mm-hmm. I don't know if I could do this anymore. But it's the same thing. It's like with every sport. It, it's not MMA fans. It's internet people. It's crazy. And dude. this is what happens. And you have to be built for it. It in the se- it like if you're gonna deal with it, you got to be built for it. If you're not gonna deal with it, then you just have to ignore it because otherwise, this shit is just fucking yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, the, like I mean, like we've been talking about the shit that people come at me with with the Deegan shit. It's like I just wish that okay. one of these times. Yeah, there's not, some funny stuff on the Twitter. Now. I just wish that one of these times, not that I would ever like throw hands, but I would just wish that one of these times, some of these people would like see us at a race. And here's the thing: they would actually have to go. to Nobody races will ever to see do that. that though. But I would love to see it just to see what would happen because. I'm just like, dude, if you want to have a conversation about it, I'll have a conversation with you. But like you like getting all on your shit and on your soapbox behind a keyboard. What cool. I don't care. The people the people Because people have always hated me on this show. So like <laughs> I find it fucking funny. I, I laugh because none of them would ever say it to my face. No. The and the people the people that are on there that are always like clickbait, clickbait. Like, Welcome you to not, YouTube. <laughs> do you not know how say, this shit works, bro? Thank you for the money. I just find it I just find it funny. I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. Cole's like the only one that's ever, like, only ever gotten like a little bit of hate. And no it's one. That same dude that says you eat like mustard or something. Oh, it's yeah. got to be somebody I know with a burner. Account. He hasn't been. They haven't been on there though. Uh, in a long yeah. time. I know, but it's got to be somebody oh, I know. Be, I, it, has I, has I think it's no Wyman, way. dude. It's so specific. So yeah. it's, it's got to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah. It, but nobody approached me yesterday when I was wearing the shirt with no, like, without the jacket on. I had the jacket on long because it was kind of cold in there. But you uh, probably not. What were you wearing? The anti Deegan Deegan club oh, shirt. You so would, nobody said anything. Nobody said a fucking word. Here's to me. the thing, and the, obviously they didn't have it in Detroit. You'd probably have to be in the pits at like the during fan fest when like all his fucking groupies. which is where it could get interesting during. I, I think Indy that that's if where it's warm it would, enough. I think that's where it would happen if maybe, it's going to happen anywhere because in the stands, like maybe I need to get a maybe I need to get a uh, uh, hoodie made before we go to Detroit or before we go to Indy just to make sure. I got I'm that. telling you, I think that if that's what it's going to be there because that's yeah. when they're all in the same area. Whereas like you're walking through the stands, like I just, there was a lot you have of to, Deegan you have to like, take yesterday. your way. Yeah. You have to go out of your way to yeah. like make a point of it. I actually kind of want to buy Did you see his merch drop? They put out right before Detroit. So he's got a uh, uh, shirt that looks like the old dare logo, but it's danger. Oh, no shit. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. I was like, I might have to buy one of those. Cause I do like, I like that. Hey, man, and I'm not, not again, we always talk about this. I don't fucking hate him. I love him. I think they're. I think we're gonna they're talk great. about I think him. They're good. I like this show a lot because there was a lot, and I'm sure you saw it with opening ceremonies yesterday. There was a lot going yeah, on we'll, there. We'll, we'll get into talking yeah, about we'll like roll what with we that. saw. But uh, so, oh, go ahead. You should have seen all the compliments I got with I, with the jacket. <laughs> oh, the Chevy <laughs> truck jacket. Oh, dude, left and right people were yeah. stopping me. I bet, dude. I bet. And then, uh, so Justin Hill is my buddy. That's like in the band. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. He was dude uh, that's friends with Kenny. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I was standing there, and he came walking up. He's like, "Man, dude, that's a sick jacket." <laughs> oh shit, it's cool. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So no, that was cool. The, but yeah, like as far as getting into the race, and, and you weren't there. Um, no, we'll start right off with Deegan. I thought the opening ceremonies bit. They literally got into town a little early. He flew private, by the way. Shocking. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let's let's. Let's finish our normal intro, and then we can fire off with the 250s. Well, let's go was... with some opening hold ceremonies. On, hold on, hold on. We've got some stuff to do here, okay? Okay, let House it rip, cleaning. Mr. Host. Number one, we have a new sponsor. Ooh. I'd like to welcome on board 50 Graphics. 50graphics.com. It's 50graphx.com. Local Michigan company. A uh, guy much like us. Loves moto. Wanted to, wanted to start a graphics company. The graphics are solid. We've got them. There's some somewhere here on some. Well, go to last week's show. We had it up yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, but they're on board. Uh, they do custom graphics so they can put all of your logos and everything on there for you. Um, they have some pre-done graphics kits on the website. Again, he is like us. He is a uh, 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 just a just a guy who wanted something on the side to do and seeing what he can grow it into. Uh, his owner's name is Jason. Super nice dude. Talked to him on the phone this week. Um, so we will have a discount code and stuff. I'm not sure if I'll have it before the show goes up, but there will be a link in the description. So if you guys want to go check them out and use them for all your graphics needs, uh, I'm pretty sure he can do almost anything you want. You just have to talk to him. Um, and like I said, he's, he's one of those guys, one of those small companies that can work with you and they're not really like 
just set in like this specific lane like he can he can do a lot of different stuff for you and we'll hopefully do some more stuff with him here as we go forward but uh yeah they're on they're on they're our presenting sponsor at this point so um also presenting the show complete racing solutions and uh still promoting their 30 minute workouts so if you want to do one of those a week two of those a week whatever these are 30 minutes anybody can come up with 30 minutes with it can you come up with 30 minutes in your day yeah to do a workout i mean look at how him. about you mr kawasaki can Maybe. you come up with i could one? probably come up with it, but look at this guy he can definitely come up with it. he can definitely come hey, up with no, it. Thanks, guys. not to be weird can i see your abs i don't have my abs back i'm, I'm it's starting to like uh, form let me see that, what you got we need to do no, ab training no, you got a v-line it's it's forming it's forming is it pointing at your dick yet <laughs> that was can we move on we're i feel like there's we'll, gonna be we'll enough dick more jokes on like the show. That here in a little bit <laughs> 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 um anyway so check them out complete racing solutions.com coach rob can help you out with all the stuff both on and off the bike and like i said those 30 minute workouts uh 22 bucks a month if you pay monthly or 15 dollars per month if you pay all in one lump sum for the annual payment um also on board with us tlr coatings we're in the tlr coating studio here Travis's my company, shop, by the way. My company. We can help you guys with custom powder coating or Sarah coating. Hey, I saw some of your product today, actually. Wagner's Where? Pit Bike. Ah, yeah. Yep. He got that all done. Looks good. Yeah. He's all like, right. yeah, your boy hooked it up with this. Fuck yeah, I did. Did so. a whole bunch of parts on that. Um, also on board with us, we've got Gutter Works for all your custom exterior home needs slash seamless gutters that are perfecto josh and kayla and the kids were at the race yesterday they're going to bring you our 450 race recap uh we've got isaac nelson designs for the digging danger zone and that's everyone that's on board there's links in the description down below i've Thanks, got everyone. the vrm shirt here so if anyone one. wants to order one of these you uh, want to know what's fucked up about that you came up with it's it i came up with it's it on the even shelf have down below we're on a fucking budget right now okay i need you to leave me alone okay if i know our man patrick weiler got a shirt with my he commission. bought it I'm you, looking for you want you okay I'm you want your 30 out. cents <laughs> jesus look look man you can get your lawyer involved i'll be sure to give you your 30 cent cut yeah. once maybe, the lawyer maybe sends we'll me have the letter some by indy. Yeah. yeah by indy maybe st louis if we go there we're getting close here so i don't know we'll see um so yeah again everything uh in links down below Thank in the you. description down below so, all right, let's. Um, we want to do the two fifties first. So, your two fifty race recap. Oh, brought we gotta to you. Do, get your song. Oh, sorry, sorry. First up, we're yeah, gonna do this opening is my, ceremonies. My favorite segment. Opening ceremonies. Cole's favorite segment. And here. I know you prepared this week. I did. I listened to some music this week. Um, I actually had a song that I was as soon as I heard it, I was like, man, this really fits like the era we're in right now with the whole Jetson uh. <laughs> Ando situation. Uh, so I, ha- and everybody's going to, I didn't pick a Jet song. So that's that's amazing, well, right? That's, that's a good change. I think you picked my guy. Uh, yeah, so Jason Anderson, uh, Lil Wayne, I do it. Just feel like it describes Ando perfectly, especially with what we saw there at San Diego. I did give it a listen. The opening lyrics is, is talking about like move, get out the way, kind uh, of thing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, all ludicrous. sorts of stuff. Yeah. Well, no, not ludicrous, but it's. it's uh, well, I mean, like when ludicrous did the move, get out the way. Yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, I was like listening to. It, I was like, man, this would be great to have him just like a scene of him grabbing Jet's helmet. Like it'd be it'd be perfect. That would so, be hype. I, it's, I, I mean, okay, there we go. That was me. Well, once again, um, with the rap song, so go ahead. Look, man, I'm going to get into the rap thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to go Jet Lawrence. Oh, um, okay. We switched it up. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna be Jet Lawrence. I'm going to be a little cocky with it. I'm going to do some, uh, actually not Lil Wayne, but I'm going to do some Birdman. Oh, And yes. I'm going to do uh, some Money to Blow. Yes. All right, Love so we're it. definitely just going to stay in this Lil Wayne Birdman because I totally <laughs> yes. forgot about it. I'm going to go with Lil Wayne, but I'm going to be Mookie, and I'm going to go with Fireman. Cause Ooh. shit is on fire right now. <laughs> yeah, and not, not in a good way. Not gonna. Uh, not not in a good way, guys. Nope. Not in a good way. And I mean, this can honestly go with Craig too, because things are on fire for that whole team. I'm it's not fire man. It's not fire, great. So, fire man. Yeah. All right. So that's been your opening ceremonies. If you guys have an opening ceremony song for a certain rider that you think would be hype, go ahead and comment it down below in the comments. Mid two thousands rap, so good, so Mr. great. Oh, dude, I mean, we could. I mean, we could segue right into that. Like Deegan coming out to hold what, on. Let's tricky. We, we gotta. We hold yeah. on. Relax. Jared relax. Lofters, we gotta yeah. get this. All uh, right. So, I don't know. I thought that was well done, but so, whatever. Okay. So we're gonna jump into this two fifty race recap. Brought to you by our newest sponsor, Fifty Graphics. Make sure to check them out for all your custom graphics needs link in the description down below this fucking guy called it and when he called it yeah we will uh well actually hold on i wasn't on the uh oh that's a detroit entry list where's the detroit finishing what the fuck well i do know who got the top three yeah yeah, yeah. so anyway okay um yeah so fortner comes out and wins uh and i could just tell 
like heat race, main, everything. That man was determined he to get was through there the first corner. No, he was determined to get through the first corner first. Too. Well, yeah. He hasn't made it too far down the start straights lately. And uh, I think he pulled a whole shot in the main and the mm-hmm. heat. And, mm-hmm. uh, man, that's right where the doctor ordered, man. And uh, watching him, like, it was very jettish. Were you, like, fingers sense. crossed the whole time, though, just, like, waiting for the other shoe Not, to drop and something to happen? Because I, I, I don't was. Know. He looked really solid. With his luck, I was just like, dude. Something's with gonna happen. Rhino, no, with his no. luck, yes. Rhino's working wonders for him, man. This is the first time I've seen Fortner ride like that. I mean, mm-hmm. well, that right there, that shirt you got on, is exactly what I thought about. He yeah. needs one of those. He needs Rhino needs to get in the movement. Like, um, but it was very. I don't know why we're claiming coining this as Jet Lawrence ish now, but he just managed the gap. Yeah, like he knew Dungy? where he was at. I very think he Dunge. had more in the. Yeah, I think he just had more in the tank. Mm-hmm. I really do. I yeah. mean, I, he's and that's been his problem for a long time. He's never left more in the tank. He's always been zero or a hundred. Yeah. He's always been either I'm going to go win by twenty seconds or I'm going to ragdoll, which you can say Stu esque on that end. Mm-hmm. There's other, been other people, but it was a very controlled Austin Fortner. Even in you can go back to the heat race when Dax was closing in on him, and and it's like, oh man, like Fortner is is he laying up? Is is it is is Fortner going to do Fortner things? Dax closed on him. Fortner's like, nah, man, like I'm cool. I'm just gonna ride my race. But it mm-hmm. honestly looked like one of those things that had Dax run it in on him. Mm-hmm. And Fortner, all right, I'm gonna up my pace a little bit. And had Dax up the pace again, Fortner would have been cool with, hey, man, you you, you want the heat race? Yeah, I think cool. that's the way it changes. Take the heat race, bro. Mm-hmm. Take the heat race. Now I got a question for you guys because we're talking about this, and especially mm-hmm. you being a Kawasaki guy, like. All this talk. No, he of, can't answer because he's a Kawasaki. No, no, guy, so not yeah, yeah. over here. No, no, he's no. Got, he's got to be the I don't think, walk a certain line, I don't think this is going to go with where you guys think it's going to go. Best Maybe. bike ever. <laughs> <laughs> Best okay. team ever. Subjective. Super whatever. smooth. Um, total power. Best so, package. Go I, buy one. Because I think it's good. I think it is a good question to have. So I know we're only one race in, and obviously the, sh- the other shoe could drop come Arlington in a few weeks. Knock on wood. I hope it doesn't. But there's been all this talk about Austin, you know. What's going to happen with him? We know that he's going to get at least a shot outdoors on a 450. We kind of assumed that it was going to be the year that he made it through all of Supercross. We kind of assumed maybe this summer it's going to be because it was supposed to be a couple years ago, and obviously Tim and Jet got into it, and he had a bad year. And then now all this talk with what's going to happen with AC, Prado, all this kind of... I got to ask you guys, and this is hypothetical, and everybody in the comments, calm down because I'm saying if... Look, this is in Deegan. No one's going to comment about it. No one cares. If No, when they hear... If, Fortner wins this title. Yeah. He's healthy. I don't care if he wins it by a point or 30. Okay. Wins it by a point. Wins this title. Does Cowie and Mitch have an understanding with letting him go ride outdoors on the 250? Possibly winning that title too. And then giving him a fair shake for a whole year Supercross and outdoors on the factory team. Because I'm here to tell you, we have all this talk about what happens with AC, Prado's name's been thrown in the mix. There's been some other guys' names that have been rumbling. We've heard... But I'm here to – if Fortner is healthy and he's got two 250 titles, His stock that changes. That changes the whole narrative His about what – goes up, but I don't think it changes anything. Man, I just not – with, Not with some of the rumblings we're hearing. Look, and here's the Prado, the Prado thing. I mean, who are you going to sign? A 450 outdoor world – or 450 MXGP champion? Or are you going to sign Fortner who wins two 250 titles and has literally struggled with luck his entire – fucking career at this point if i'm fortner man i want that 450 ride and i want to lock it in because you lock in a 450 ride that's a lot more money that's you know that's that's the tip that we talk about the sport want the sport wanting to be an elite sport you get a 450 ride that's where you're at yeah but he i just dude i just don't see a way he locks it in like there's you don't think though even with the competition that if he goes out and wins two titles with all the people no not if they're if they're talking about spending money on prado no fucking I just way. I look at it for him and I go because that's the thing a lot of people and we know in this industry that everybody's got short term memory loss. Yeah. But like and I and I saw it firsthand. He didn't have as much hype, but he came close to having just as much hype as AC through the amateurs. Like people forget because he's had a yeah. bad few years. Fortner was supposed to be the next prodigy. He, he had all the rights. Yeah, I mean, there was undefeated talk with he, him. And he there's was. a lot of people that believe that he should have had at least three 250 titles by now. And there's some people that believe not only that, but that he could have had a 450 title by now. Should have. Yeah, because you go doesn't. back to tw- No, I know. So, but again, some of it's been bad luck. Some A lot of it's self-inflicted and some of it not. Okay, I'll go I'll go right to the Steve Mathis argument, okay? So he wins these two, two, two 250 titles. Mm-hmm. Let's just say that that fucking happens. What puts him in any better position at that point than, say, 
Hunter Lawrence, Aaron Plessinger. What makes him better than them that would lock in that title or he, lock in that ride? It, it doesn't, but okay, those guys then do that's, have. Then that's but the those guys the are locked in, though. They, but but I'm saying that's the answer to the question because you're essentially like if he wins those two at this point, you're just buying another one of those guys. What have they done in the 450s? Yeah. You know, so it's like great second tier guy, whatever. But again, if they're talking to Prado. They're going after titles is oh, yeah, what they're sure. trying to get for to sure. here. Okay. No, so if I can tell you that for sure. Kawasaki wants a title. Yeah. Okay. So if they're if they're doing that, mm-hmm. insider info over here. <laughs> if they're doing that, I then mean, there's no way that he's getting that ride over Prado. He's just he's oh, fucked. Not, like, I'm, say, like I'm sorry to I'm say it. It's a shitty is. thing, but he's fucked. At that point, I think he tr- I think you go to like beta and you try to ride for them, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, man, that's because such they're, a career suicide. I'd rather there ride my own bike. That would be where, such where a, is he gonna where else is he gonna go? I just ride feel, his own? Okay, cool. So you're gonna spend all that money? I that doesn't he, fucking I mean, work. I think he you know, he can maybe do like a modal concepts route or like a. But then he's not running outdoors. He gets forgotten. I'll be honest like with you. Fucked. I think that that'd be the biggest slap in the face to somebody like Austin Fortner. I think moment. he'll. I think he'll get a shot on the Kawasaki. He's. I think he's going to too because it's kind of been locked into a contract. But it's like, we'll see what happens. He's and gonna, we kind of all thought that it'd be a shot, and then he'd flame out, and then they'd be like, "Yep, we washed our hands with it." I just feel that if he can yeah. do this, if he can win these two titles, it's a lot of hype for one race win here. <laughs> yeah, a lot I know. Of hype. we got we just Let me ask you a question rebel. though: Is yeah. it is it though? Because the one race thing, you look at what he's accomplished, and if he is, this is actually a new Austin Forger. I don't feel like it is, man, because you once again a little bit short term memory loss on our part. Stu's got 13 wins now on the 250. Yeah, I'm, He should have won. You could go back to 2018 when he battled with Zacco. The night he lost the points in Minnesota at the Triple Crown. He had the points lead. He blew the knee. 2019, he fucking was gone on Chase Sexton. In mm-hmm. 2020, Dylan Adam handled, but you could also kind of look at what happened the year before. If he comes in mentally stable, does he win that title? And then we'll never know in 2021 because him and Jet just got into it early and then obviously the last couple of years. But yes, one race, it seems like a lot. But I just feel with like a guy like him that if he has finally turned over a new leaf, I think he has. This is talking about a yeah. dude that has the potential to carry that and do something on a 450. I don't Unlike know. Unlike a lot of these guys where we talk about like, hey, with Jacob, not a shot of Jacob. He's just the first guy that came to mind. Very accomplished guy. But we kind of all knew that no matter how many titles Jacob won on a 250, the chances of ever winning a 450 title was like what fifteen percent? But Fortner, yes, Ooh, I could. That's you really a think bold. Could win a four fifty title. No, if Fortner. I'm if out this on is that. the new, if this know. is the guy, mm. you don't. So you don't think that in 2019 can, that if he'd have finished off the series, he could have won a four fifty title moving forward. I don't think he could have won a four fifty title, but I think he could be a race winner. I mean, Man, at, this, at I, this point, he's the same. He's the same age as Chase. So now you're coming into the 450 class as a rookie here, and you think he has the possibility of beating Chase? If his, if he, if this is a new Austin Fortner, if it's it, not the same guy, mm, if it's the same guy, short term memory loss, even man. As, even he's as more, a, even as a new one, I'm, yeah, I'm out. But, but you know who ran right with those guys on a 250, and Who's that? and only has one Supercross title, and is locked in on a 450 is Jay Coop. Yeah, no, he ran right with those Lawrence. Boys. What I'm mm-hmm. saying with Jay Coop, the the the. The example I was giving with Jay Coop is, is that Jay Coop, even if he had won a Supercross title, an outdoor title, and then like came close the next year, the speed and the talent, let's be real, there's a big difference speed and talent-wise between Austin Fortner and Justin Cooper. I'm talking about that. That if Fortner has finally somehow figured it out, whether you want to attribute that to Rhino, just all the bullshit that's gone, I just look at a guy, 25 or not, that has just as much talent as those dudes that are running up front in the 450 class that you could have argued f- four years ago had he never gotten hurt in 2019. Chase Sexton's Supercross champion right now. Fortner used to wax that ass. Used to. Before he got hurt. Jet, so Jet Reynolds used to wax everybody's ass in amateurs, yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah. Here's, yeah, that's so here's the other thing to like, like wrap it up, because this is a race recap. But, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's okay. This is, yeah, this is relevant. We, we always go off the rails. It's, but, I mean, it's relevant. Um, He's like th- this, is a, this is a good conversation, well, and I, it could go both ways, but I'm not on this path with you. Here's what I'm worried about, though, is you want to compare him to Sexton. Sexton has been relatively healthy. Mm-hmm. He's not waking up in the morning hurting. Mm-hmm. No. And I think Fortner's wrist, I mean, he mm-hmm. had, I mean, he was looking at death right in the face when they went in, like, his kidney deal, mm-hmm. like, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Like, that no, worries me. Is that is his body going to be able to 
handle the 450 yeah. class. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, first I mean, off, look, I mean, look at Hunter Lawrence right now. First off, let's get a few more rounds in here and kind of see where we're That's at. That's why I said yeah. hypothetical. Yeah. I bet it's I, a I hypothetical. I mean, the hypothetical the talk. Thing, like, yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, about half it. the first turn went down in the first corner. So, <laughs> yeah. Or half the pack went yeah. down in the first turn. Yeah. So I just, I, I, just be- I just believe, honestly, and, and what do I know? This is just my opinion. But I just believe, honestly, that if we get a few rounds in and he keeps winning and he starts distancing himself, especially now that a lot of the top dudes, and we're going to talk about it with a certain somebody, well, a few of them, the chances of them closing the gap on him is yeah. slight or very slim unless some crazy shit happens. You oh. got to know that Kawasaki somewhere, somebody is having the conversation in their mind going, is he finally, is he finally figured it out? Is he, is like, is it finally happening? Is I'm having what, that conversation. Now. Is this the guy that we finally figured out? Cause it's gonna, it's somebody's having the conversation somewhere. If he goes out and he keeps winning, I'm going to, I'm going to pull a you. It's not impossible, but I'm not on board with it. I don't. I don't agree yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's so, going to happen. I'm just yeah, saying, if, like, if he can just, you know, be somewhat himself. I mean, half the guys I think that we're going to contend with him for a title were down in the first turn yeah. and they're this far back already. Yeah, I think so, it's more of me wanting it to happen for him because I will say I don't ever say that people deserve anything in this sport, but I think that kid is owed a title. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is, and and I've said it over and over again. He's like, not a jackass he, anymore. Yeah, when he <laughs> first came in, like, dude. Fuck this dude. Cocky 2016, ass one, you know. Yeah. 2016. Oh my god, bro. One one thing to talk. One thing just to touch on here before we close out the Forkner thing. So I went to the race with a buddy of mine who is not a moto guy. Yeah. Okay. We're staying in the hotel room last night. Um, and he's like, "Oh, uh, what what's Forkner's wife's name?" Riley. Yeah, something like that. Riley Jean Kirk. And he was like, he he like rattles off the name. He's like, "Oh, she was at the race." And I was like, "Who?" And he's like, oh, you know who she is. And then he, like, shows me the picture of her and, like, the fucking... Uh, on the bike? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. of course. And I go, oh, Fortner's wife? And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, she's dating some... Or she's married some moto guy. I go, yeah, the guy who won the 250 race. He goes, oh, all right. Yeah. So, like... Well, th- see, that's another thing I like about Fortner now. Like, he's, like, coming into his own, like, who he is. He, he understands that he's a badass on a bike, knows he's a badass on a bike, no, he's got knows he has always, a smoking hot wife. Always talking about those uh, things that Holster Co can help us out with that go bang bang pew pew pow pow. You know, which is in, awesome. Which he's is definitely not what I thought Austin Fortner would actually turn I mean, he's out from to Oklahoma, be. No. bro. But I mean, yeah, that's true too. Um, wait, wait, what? I think he's in Illinois. No, he's from Missouri, guys. Oh, whatever. <laughs> same area. Oklahoma, and Missouri are the same damn thing. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Everything's Whoa. fine. Don't tell Kev I said that. He's from calling him right now. He's a Kansas guy, but that, the Kansas is pretty much the same. Same thing. I mean, it's all the same thing in the middle oh, there. Never mind. All right, keep but going. I, I, keep I just going. found it interesting the crossover there of someone who's not even in moto, but because this smoking hot chick is on well, Instagram. She's also an ex monster. No, he's, he follows her on Instagram. She's also an ex monster chick too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like that's another thing with Fortner. Like he knows he has a hot chick. So what's he do? Throw her on a t-shirt. What yeah. they do? Make a bunch of money. Should. Yeah. Well, he also distanced himself from his dad. Have anything to do with this program? Well, yeah. There's yeah, a lot. There's a lot. Was there on the podium? Well, last well stuff. his dad may be there, but he's not running that program yeah. anymore. So that was anyway, a big deal. all right. So Fortner's first. Um, Anstey. Comes in with the low key hype, gets second. Doesn't give a shit about the low key hype. I will be he was on- fast all day. I will be honest though. He was fast. He was not winner fast. Top of the board fast. And I and I think that is what we've seen with Anstey here is like he always comes in with hype here of like, man, he's so fast at the test track and he might be at the test track. But when it comes to race day, he lacks that half percent top end speed. Like at no point last night was I like Man, oh, he's gonna he's, reel Fortner. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna reel him in. It was just like, yep, he's there. He's hanging. He's putting in the laps, but there was no closer closure whatsoever. I, I tell you what, though, guys, that rhythm section before the whoops when he was coming off the three into the corner and shifting forth in the air, and then just waiting that inside peg through the corner and just bombing down the inside. Looks that sweet. was holy shit. I really thought that section they were gonna go four four in someone was going to go 4-4 yesterday. This four. rhythm section before it? Yeah. Oh. I like, could see somebody going on off four into the corner. Well, is that what you're talking about? No, I, I really thought somebody was going to go rail the outside of that corner and go four, so go single, table, over single, and then do the four into the corner because it was yeah. a five-footer, so like the yeah, pocket was pretty big. The, the moment pocket, that I... S- yeah, I, that pocket really reminded me of like the Ken Roxon pocket. You know Maybe. I mean? And nope. the, the thing I did discover like in in q2 when i was watching because i was sitting down at the end there like looking down that rhythm section is that the face of the jump in where you would jump onto the table Mm -hmm. wasn't 
it wasn't that great. Yeah. Like it wasn't big enough to be able to do that. So um, side note here, going off a little bit, did that track layout look very, any f- familiarity to you? I mean, it's the same one they have at Star. Yeah, we know this. Okay, yeah, the other Star. Yeah, Star had A1 I mean, did, and Detroit, but it okay. doesn't It doesn't cross over. Everybody talks about this, but, like, it doesn't cross Pockets over the dirt different. so different. Well, just what I'm saying. Like, at the Star facility, after the finish line, mm-hmm. if, the, if it was, like, exactly the same, Deegan went over table quad into the I mean, Jed did it yeah. once in practice. Yeah, he well. He did the quad? He did it once in practice, and it was he was trying to put in a heater, and he had to fucking go to the moon, and he couldn't drive forward because he was stretched out, and then he realized, no. The, so he the, went over table four. Yeah. The other the other thing is is that somebody but he was stretched out like yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. vertical. So, somebody in the comments during the qualifying show when I was talking about him going quad quad in that section was like, yeah, Deegan's done that at the Star Track, mm-hmm. so it's got to it be slightly matter, yeah, different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like there's not there's not a huge correlation in my opinion to that. When I saw press day, the how soft the faces were getting. Anything that I saw on the track map that I thought was going to happen, I was mm-hmm. like, hell yeah, no. with yeah. the faces and fuck no, people yeah, were like ugh. it 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 broke down, but it wasn't. Like indie soft, it wasn't terrible, terrible. No. But there no. was, it was definitely ruddy, but well, it wasn't yeah, terrible. Well, terrible. while we're on the topic of dirt too, I like like you guys were talking about last week. It all depends on if Monster Jam was there. Mm-hmm. Monster Jam was not there first. No, so you no, did see yes. your typical soft. Mm-hmm. They'll be there yep. at the end of this month. Yeah, yeah. And, and like usually, Detroit's kind of a dust bowl because yeah. of Monster Jam mm-hmm. making it that way. So yep. Uh, but anyway, uh, so Anstey second there. Love the attitude though. I'll say this. I'll, I mean, you guys know I'm a Max guy. Love the attitude because they just kept harping on this whole thing fast, fast. Even all, and it wasn't just the media. Like obviously, guys from the West mm-hmm. and Max is just like, yeah, like I, I don't really ever pay attention to that. Like me being faster in the week doesn't mean I'm gonna be fast on the. And because he's been there, done that. He's literally mm-hmm. a world traveler. I love it. Because we do know, granted, he's not a young buck by any means. He's been doing this for mm-hmm. 14 years now, going on 15. Um, we see these guys sometimes buy into their own hype in the off season, especially yeah. when you're just riding with bad dudes. And if you're putting 10 on them when you guys are doing mains, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. I, I mean, I love it, man. I, I just think he's going to quietly be a top five guy the entire series it's again. Kind of like last year. Yeah, and maybe an opportunist at some point. I to mean, win. now, like, like he might, did last year. Yeah. I mean, now with a lot of guys, if they have off weekends, like, yeah. it might not even be top five. It might be, dude, he might get top three in the points. Yeah, he yeah. could just because of what love happened. It, love it. Last night, but good for that team. Yeah. Uh, Dax Bennett, third. Um, I did not see that coming. Nope. It was opportunist, okay? Like he looked he was good. good. In the heat race, though. He was good. The heat race, he was pacing. But it was he very was. it was very opportunistic because he wasn't gonna catch no. Hymus until he went down. No. Um No, no, he passed Hymus before Hymus crashed. Oh, that's right, he did. Hymus yes. did we'll get yeah. to that when we talk about that. Hymus Hymus something something weird is going his on. His knee is still fucked up. Well, no, something yeah. weird happened to him in the heat race. His knee, knee. is still fucked so up, and he it, dabbed it. Yeah. And oh, yes, okay. yeah, yeah. yes, trust me. I saw that, too, but I listened to an interview with Lars. His knee is still fucked up. I probably listen to all the same stuff. I'm I like, why is this yeah. fucking the, kid dropping yeah. an anchor again? Because he's not going to race outdoors because his, knee fu- uh, his knee is still fucked up. They're going to have to go fix it again. I'll guarantee we, you this. Yeah, all right. Well, Lars was kind of like, he can get through the season kind of thing. Dude, I pull him. I pull him. Like, why are we fucking this kid's future up just to make it through Supercross? Because it's probably an ACL, which you can race with and not really no, it doesn't hurt get worse, it anymore. But still, so, like you're young, get a fix. It's now. okay if he can, if he can handle the pain and like it doesn't hurt unless he dabs it during the day, which will probably happen every single race. But whatever, then just let him ride at this point. Birmingham. Meh, it wouldn't surprise me if he calls if they call because Daytona's in between there. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they pull him early. Um, but I, I just want to see it because the kid's got so much fucking talent. Dude. He, dude, he was uh, so he was good. He that heat race, I was like, ooh. And I mean, impressive. dude, he had it in the Until bag. He, dropped, he yeah. had it in the bag. Like mm-hmm. he, like he was gonna win that heat race. Yeah, but I feel bad for him because I know what that knee pain's yeah. like when you have it. Ooh, it sucks, mm-hmm. and it sucks when it gets fixed and you still have mm-hmm. issues with it because there's still times. And I don't know. Have you ever done a knee? No. Yeah. So there's still Not times. Would you guys pull him? Where you'll step. No, uh, not if it can't get hurt worse. If it can't get hurt worse and all we're going to see is like this, it's like, bro, you are you have the speed. This is all just reps that we're doing. Like, yeah. pull, like, like I wouldn't have him race outdoors. Yeah. Trust me. Oh, like, he's not as, soon, as soon as SLC's over, if we can make it that far, boom, pull him and you? surgery next day. I think it it all depends on how bad the pain actually is. I think this in this decision, if I'm playing team manager, mm-hmm. it's up to my rider. Yeah. Like, hey, Mr. Ryder, how bad is it? Can you get to Salt Lake City? Mm-hmm. And we know these yeah. we know these kids nowadays with all the pressure they're under. Be like, yeah, no, I can do it. Because this yeah. is what he needs reps in. Because yeah, this is what everybody know. cares about. I feel about. like it might be a little different under the Honda tent. Yeah. I feel yeah. like Lars would be... There is going to be a kid we're going to talk about later that 
definitely feels the pressure to keep moving forward. But yeah, I can yeah, see okay. that. So, so, yeah, so anyway. Dax, um, though, D- Dax was, yeah. Opportunist. <laughs> off on that Hymas tangent. <laughs> I mean, opportunist. Yep. But still didn't see, even at an opportune time, did not see a podium. Yeah, Good no, for him, this, man. What's this rumor I heard about he uh, got hit by a car or something biking? So he was out for a little while. I don't know. I didn't hear anything, I about, didn't hear that. anything about that. I heard that he was out cycling, got hit by a car, so he lost a little bit. Because there was like talk of like how big the star team is. Yeah. And none of them showing up because like Lopes <laughs> out, Romano coming back from injury, Styles, wrist, Styles yeah. is out. Probably because the assholes in Florida do not care about cycles, no, man. Yeah. They don't. Probably not. So, um, but no, good for him, man. Was yeah. not on my bingo card at all, but I mean, he, solid he did man. Look solid man. He looked good, dude. If he can keep getting starts like that and just putting in laps, mm-hmm. not being too high, not being too low, just being even and just learning. I mean, the more podiums it could possibly be there because, uh, dude, I hate to say it, but I think we're going to... War of attrition field, in this This field's going to thin out pretty quickly because mm, some of these dudes... a lot of crashes. And some of these dudes are going to be sending it in our lane. Yeah. Uh, Cody Shock fourth, the Holy. highlight of the day for that the Club a, MX team. Yes, that was definitely a shocker. Hey, yeah. and I'll tell you this. Talking about a kid that needed something like... like the I fucking know, team needed that I kn- yesterday. I know, I well, know that, and- that he, them bouncing him from Phoenix, like that didn't even come close. I didn't understand that that was the situation, yeah. and I'm very interested in what the hell happened. So I know there. that they he needed wasn't, money for Ferrandez, and, and I know that that mm, was like a small amount, yeah. a small amount. Because let's be real, Cody shocked salary as opposed to what it's going to cost to get Dylan. But they needed to just thin things. Well, what out. do you what do you think his salary was? Cody shock? Did I bet fifty G's? I bet, I bet he probably was making like sixty. Okay, an extra sixty grand. No, to no, throw I'm not Ferrandis, saying it's, you know? it's money, but we know that that's not. There was more to it. But I like the fact that he looked at because he's a northeast guy he's from Delaware or New Hampshire, so, Delaware, Delaware, yeah, yeah, Delaware, Dover, Dover, Delaware. So this kid's always been gritty. We know this, but I love the fact of the story that he literally loaded up his fucking blasted out two fifty two banger, went to club and was just pounding out motos, mm-hmm. and they're just like, all right. Let's see what he's got. Well, thank God they signed him because otherwise yesterday would have been a real shit show. And you want to and you want to talk about a kid outdoors. And you want to talk about I hope they put him on a four fifty outdoors. Yeah, that'd be really good. You want to talk about a kid that like is not a practice guy, not a heater guy? Because I'm looking at the board and I'm trying to look for his name and I'm thinking, man, we're getting out to fifteen. I think that's that's low. And then he puts in laps, bro. Very fillish. His uh, his thing was, I'm not going to go too fast. I'm just going to put in all the laps. That's what he literally said in a post race interview with Steve. And son, it got you. And son, it got you fourth. It got him fourth. He got through that first turn, shit, and got a fourth place. Yeah, that's got to fuel. He's got to be on cloud nine. Has to be. Has to be. Great whole team there. Do we want to touch on that whole team situation? So Jet Reynolds breaks his freaking collarbone. Done. Free practice. He's got to be done, bro. That's just. Like what Opa. at this point? At this point, like what? What? Hopefully, he saves some of that monster money so he can buy a bike and go race. Because two titles by now, <laughs> unbelievable. Dude, that kid should never ride Supercross ever again. Anybody heard anything about Jeremy Martin's situation? Apparently, he's yes, okay. He's good. He's good. He's good. Uh, my guy Denver actually came through, and uh, Brandon texted him. But that mm. was and that was they showed it on the broadcast. It was bad. At, it was. I, I was it. scared in the stadium. I didn't. No one saw it because it was the end of practice. And then I see a, no, he, a kid in red laying the there. Was, it was at the end. And of I was oh, like, yeah, "Oh yeah. shit! Is it shock? Yeah. And it is fucked up as it sounds. I was like, "Man, I, I'd rather see it be yeah. shock yeah. than J Mart." Shock could bounce back. Then up. I could kind of see the bike because it, it was across the state. I was sitting yeah. in two forty six on the other end there where they coming in out of the tunnel, and I was like, "Oh, that's a single digit. That's fucking J Mart." Like he laid there. He was dumb. I'm telling he, you, he, he didn't, didn't move, move for like five, ten minutes. It was scary. And, and then when you, it, you know, it's like when we were in St. Louis, when you see all the A star guys yeah. at one place, it's bad. And I'm here to tell you, I really believe. Remember how I said in the thing that like his mind is still sharp, but his mm-hmm. muscles just don't respond anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think so because, dude, like when they replayed it after you guys said it, I'm like, what the fuck you got? When you guys mentioned that, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like I didn't see J Mart, nothing. And then and they went to, they, they showed it, and then they brought it back. And dude, he got bar swap. I get it. He got loose. But it literally looked like he was trying, and he just couldn't get his body to do anything he wanted. He just like was going with it, and then it pitched him, and he was like, "All right, well, I hope I don't die." And so, yeah, and w- and the, what the real thing was was it whipped his head and then smashed his head into the ground. <sighs> so like he's got to have a huge concussion. Jay Mart just don't because it, yeah, cause it was just, just as soon as his head hit, you just saw his whole body just go. Ugh. Why? Why is I don't Art, understand so, why so, he's even so, this. This should be one of those guys on a newer style contract that I talk about before, where you're an SMX outdoor guy only. So when we say okay, like no injury from that, just knocked out loopy 
and plans on racing the next round. <sighs> That's nuts. Okay, Mark, don't do Supercross, man. Just go outdoors because, like, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's listening. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, I wish he w- if he was. Yeah. I love Jay Mark. I love him too, man. Like, I, I think he's awesome. Like, him and his brother, they're cool. Talk, anybody that talks shit to Phil is cool with me. <laughs> um, you know, just because, like, Phil, like, hanging out with him would be so fun because oh, it'd be yeah. just, like, me and my buddies shit talking the whole time. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's just he's had such a rough go at it. How crazy is it to think that this man comes out two back to back outdoor titles, <laughs> gets like seven? I know his Supercross c- c- career to that point was very up and down, but yeah, like wins. seven, seven wins or whatever it is in two years. Podium on a four fifty at Daytona, killing it, battling for titles left and right outdoors. Even after that, fucking when he moved to the Geico team and that bike was a turd and blown well, up. He uh, he put. Podium, that Geico bike at Daytona, did yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and then he whole shotted uh, a one in 2018 on the 450. Yeah. yeah, like, dude, I just you want to talk about a guy that what could have been? Mm-hmm. How many titles this guy could have had by now? Yep, and just dude, he's had shit luck since at least two titles, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's had shit luck pretty much ever since he got landed on. Yeah, yep, that's bad. So, um, okay, so moving on, uh, Pierce Brown gets fifth. Was not down in the brown was at not all. Down, but I can mean, we talk? Kind of spicy in practice. Can we talk about the brown on swole crime? Yeah, that was kind of like out of left field. Even his manager was like, "Yeah, that was kind of aggressive." I mean, look, Jalik's a little <laughs> yeah. shithead sometimes. Like, you got to put him. In his place. Did you hear that too? I don't know. His manager was like, even Steve was like, "Come on!" When yeah. he was like, "Yeah, sometimes Pierce leaves the KTM track as the fastest guy, four fifties and all." Yeah, I mean, dude, Pierce has got a lot of talent. He's always done weird shit like this. Well, it Sexton reminds me and like AP Sean must be having really off days. It kind of reminds me of like Sean Cantrell back in the day, man. Like yeah, I was going to say, you want to tell me he's faster than Sexton at the test track? Get fucked. No way. No, no way. No, I could, see him, I could see him like on good days being like Well, maybe tenths. if Sexton's running like two oh. by fours. In yeah, the I was going to say, maybe like if he's testing. Yeah, I don't, yeah, riding two strokes yeah. that day. But I mean, um, I, don't, I don't know. Like, good for him, man. Like, once again, you're talking about a kid that a couple years ago was never going to beat him, but like, he was putting it on jet. Like, he was not scared. Fa- to fastest man. qualifier. So like, it, that was he's good. got speed. That he's doesn't always, really surprise me. Like, yeah. He's it, always snuck in some podiums, too. If, if he goes out and he was like the fastest qualifier at the rest of the rounds, mm-hmm. I'd be like, unlikely, but not like a shock. Yeah. But... I don't know. I I don't really know what to expect out of Pierce because yeah. we all get high on him, and then he just, <laughs> yeah, he just okay, he's high, and then it's just speed. down in the it brown, and then down next in the thing brown. he's hurt. Yeah. yeah, so I I mean, I don't expect much more than that. Like you said, he sneaks a podium in here and there, but that's basically it. Does he make he, it through the whole season? So I hope so. He was down in that first turn carnage, too, though, wasn't he? I don't, I don't know. So. I'm pretty I, I'd have sure to go back he and look. He's going he's gonna to need to make it through the whole year because I'm pretty sure he's on a contract here. Hold on. I got a video of that first turn. I don't know if you oh. saw me post it last oh. night. Oh, I know you were going to post it right away. He, sure uh, Why good, would you not? Like, good for him. Good for him, though. But, yeah, I don't I don't know what to expect out of him. I don't either. He's just so, like, one of those guys that needs to just finish the season. He's got so much talent, so much raw speed, but it never translates to consistent yeah, results. And he's yep, got a pretty He was good, down. You are correct. He was there down he in is, the round. picking his bike up right next to them Kawasaki guys. So that's a good ride. Yeah, I bet he saw McAdoo and was like, "I don't want that thing anywhere near me." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Um, okay, so, somebody uh, said that was on the broadcast with McAdoo picking his bike up. Really? I, I don't know. Like his hamburger meat was hanging. I don't, I don't know. I haven't that. watched the broadcast yet. Yeah, so. I don't either. I don't All right, so. uh, I know you weren't looking. Yeah, I wasn't looking for J- fucking hamburger meat. <laughs> Jalik uh, Swole Triumph debut here, sixth I, place. I think the Triumph passed the eye test for me. It was okay. I mean, dude, they were spread out all over the place at some preseason warm-up races for the GPs today, and they were on the box. The bi- I don't think the bike looked bad. It's just this is the caliber riders they have. Like, if Swole gets a start, he'll run up front on yeah. it, I think, because the bike... There was nothing, and maybe you well, can touch on this, too. There was nothing that was, like, out of the ordinary that I saw. Yeah, what I did see, though, that I was like, okay, these guys got a, a somewhat strong motor. Yeah. Was Ferry coming around the outside. He like mm-hmm. he beat half of those guys to the first turn. Yeah. He just got the shit end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Um, that tells me that they've got a good motor package, and uh, I mean, it's going to go up from there. They finally got matching clutch covers. They finally, you know. But Are their fork tubes the same? Interesting. Like the same fork tubes? Interesting. I don't know, but I was talking to another gentleman that's involved on the gear side with the team. Okay. And uh, just how, like, tight and, like, 
all the hoops you jump through with the marketing side of that company and the management and stuff? Try it out. Like how tight knit they are. It's all a the very tight tight knit on marketing. Well, I guess as shitty far, marketing. I guess or? as far as like approvals go, like they want a certain look. I mean, try. I guess their may, brand. I, maybe, 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 maybe the right should, word is brand identity. Maybe we should tone that back a little bit and just work on marketing in general. Because I don't feel like okay, this marketing. Let me was let great. me take all of what I said back <laughs> then and let's go with the brand identity okay. that they're going right. for. I, I guess um, maybe they should adjust their focus a little. Well, they bit. also had a live yeah. feed to the main uh, shop in England that was watching during mm-hmm. the broadcast. Yeah. Um, it, I don't know. I mean, I think the bikes are fine. I definitely think that the they whole... lack star power for riders is the problem. Well, I they, mean, well, what they do you expect fought? with the first team coming out? Who comes out with a team the very well, first time and gets star power? Well, here's the thing too: they don't. Ducati will. They don't have money because you like. There's no title sponsor. There's no Claw. There's no Red Bull Wing. There's no Rockstar Star yeah, on there. There's nothing. There and they're like even on the trailer. It, what does it say? Triumph Racing. It's not. This out, all state they that triumph big of a racing. Company? I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, well, for just I, motorcycles I in general, know. they are. I mean, dude, Triumph's been around I, I'm, long been, time. Yeah, I'm honestly but. nervous. They're on the same style budget, somewhat as Beta, which is the bait. Like the so, do you guys understand the situation with Beta? It's not legit Beta that is putting up the money for that. It is the dealerships in the u.s yeah, from no, my understanding no are putting up the money company. they can give oh, a shit less about yeah. moto yeah so um, i don't i don't know it's this it, summer will be interesting with joey to see if if joey starts doing well that's a whole different there. that's a whole different yeah, thing i think but, that's going to be the nail in the coffin on if this is going to be a success or not i mean dude if joey comes out and he kills it and he gets some wins in the podium it's going to up their stock but if they come out and struggle with that bike because i think that'll be the only thing then yeah it's not going to be great i'm yeah. just curious what the budget is uh, that I don't know. I don't because think anybody. I don't. I mean, if they went and bought a compound, and I'm, I'm sure Matt Walker thought his shit was not stinking, and they my, paid top dollar for that. My, I mean, my thing is, is like no, Matt instead of either. instead of spending budget on a rider, the to, finest dirt in the south down here, it's a MX. I hate, I hate that. <laughs> I hate Matt. Walker my thing so is, much. is like the compound situation's cool, and obviously stars doing it and stuff. But maybe we should just started by going to public tracks or renting at a at a other facility and spent that money on riders not uh, not like not uh, that tells me they're all in they want to win i mean so. i'm sure they do but there's it's such an interesting way that they're going about it, it let's is, put it, it that is. way the triumph thing is very interesting compared to how the other oems do it i 100 percent. how crazy is to think though that I, I i seriously believe that a lot of what happens with that team moving forward is on joey this summer yeah. We know it's super cross. Oh, like, Jalik, like you said, Jalik is going to do well if Jalik gets starts. If he doesn't mm-hmm. get starts, then he's going to work his way through and just be like a top 10 guy. Jalik can run pace. We'll, we'll, yeah, I mean, we saw, we yeah. saw last year, we'll get to Evan Ferry, but it really all depends on what happens with Joey this summer. Mm-hmm. It, I really do, which is a crazy thought to have yeah. that a dude that's been in the 450 class for as long as he has that's dropping back down. And we all talk about the outdoor series not meaning as much as Supercross, but it really depends on what Joey does this mm-hmm. summer. That what's going to happen yeah. with that team moving forward? Uh, yeah, I mean they already plan on going 450 racing, so yeah, and I mean he's going to be the guy that's developing interesting the bike. To me. So. Yeah. Very interesting to me. Um, all right, Henry Miller seventh, running Dude, top five for a long really time. Really good. He's ride. always my sneaky snake, really greasy Paul fan. He's pit, uh, Paul Pamex <laughs> fancy pick. I can't even talk to you until until, every until time. he crashes CT. because you yeah, picked CT. him. He is so sneaky good. Mm-hmm. He doesn't crash that much. No, he doesn't really. I watched that man run a full moto. I, I, I was dialed in on him because he was on my team at Redbud with no fucking seat. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, grinder. Dude, you know he's grinding. He's been pounding out motos down in Texas with John Short. Not yeah. since John Short got the beta ride, but yeah, it's. I it's, think John Short needs to pound out some more motos on that beta. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Oh, yeah, it's really, dude. People forget like Henry Miller for a while, at least in the 450 outdoors, was like hovering around a top ten dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Henry Miller. I don't know what happened to him guy. though. I think he got hurt like a year ago because his results dropped off mightily. Who, who's he riding for? Ty Lube. Ty Lube. Yeah. Ty Lube. Um. All right. Uh. Guillaume Perez, eighth <sighs> place, the sole Husky rider. Good for that. I think that, that went well for him. Not bad for a kid that's never rode Supercross. Like literally ever. Yeah. Oh, so he didn't ride Futures and he has his license. Oh. Stop! Ooh. You are Ooh, a that's fucking. That's interesting you are too. I didn't even. I didn't even make that connection there. That's an yeah, interesting I mean, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's weird, right? It's like we'll, that get to that, we'll get to that rant crazy, here. Hey, man! Crazy thing is, is I guess he backed it up. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, good for him. That dude is 
Uh, well, obviously, you rode at Star and has some Supercross experience, but never, Not much. never made it to a gate drop. Mm-hmm. Dude, like, I'm, his story's cool. I think he's got yeah. a cool story. On yeah. press day, the rhythm section after the start, where everybody was just going over the table, 3-3, three, three, he uh, went long on the first three, and they were looking at it from the corner. And when he faced into the fourth one, you could just instantly see that he was like, fuck this, never doing that again, I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, shut it down. Yep. Um... Ninth place, Marshall Welton, Michigan zone there. Not yeah, bad. Not bad for Opportune. Him. Opportune. Love it. Opportune. Almost opportuned himself out of the race, though, because that bike was smoking good. With the Gizmo Mods, Rock River, Yamaha. Well, guess what? That bike probably had no chance to cool down because there was nine minutes between the LCQ and the gate drive. Yeah, and he was in the LCQ. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah that was a thing. Good so. for Marshall, though, man. Good for Marshall. Yep. Yeah, yeah he, that disproves he's uh, in good shape. Chance uh, Chance Hymas, 10th. Yeah, we kind of touched on him already. That knee is yeah. going to be a problem all season here. He'll have speed, but as soon as he dabs it, he's done. So yeah. whatever. Other than that, he passed the eye test. For yeah, me. Like, he, he was really, really good. good all he day. Good. Like, really he good. is. Very tricky. He almost hard. looked better than Shimoda. I get a little confused, though, because him and uh, what's his nuts there? Uh, 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 Anstey wear the they same gear. They were looking gear. pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, so it's like real very, similar. Very, when I watch Hymas, I, uh, I I see the next coming of Trakenard as far as Could technique be. and style. They're very Could similar. Be. Nobody can scrub like Trey. Well, I'm no. Sorry. Well, Trey worked with him. I mean, Trey's obviously been working yeah. with him. And the Lawrence boys working with him, too. Um, yeah, he don't ride like the Lawrence boys. Okay, uh, Trevor Cullip, 11th. So I've been following that dude on like TikTok, Instagram, and stuff. I think that's like one that. of Squire's kids. Is it? I think uh, so. I think so, actually. He's a Southern Illinois kind of area Yeah, I think guy, that's one think. of Squire's kids. Hmm. Um, no, I've been following him on, on social media for a little bit. I, he posted an Insta banger. I was like, man, this kid's got some pretty cool style. So like, I kind of see some videos here and there. And mm-hmm. uh, man, good for him. Kid's that, a giant. That, yeah, big kid. <laughs> That's one yeah, of the kid. Yeah. <laughs> eats he's his big, Wheaties. He's a yeah. big kid. Yeah, uh, Mr. Collip definitely eats his Wheaties. Um, but no, I don't think anybody saw that. No, out of him. very, no. very under the radar. Um, awesome for him. Let's see if he backs it up. I mean, dude, I was yep. when I'm sitting there because I know who he was. Like, I've never met the kid, but I know him because I'm pretty sure that he was one of Squire's kids. Mm. Um, I'm sitting there watching second practice, and like Romano and Base Flug were at the top of the board in the first session. Yeah, and then Collip, and then Collip, and then all of a sudden Collip just puts in a heater. I'm like, holy shit! Yeah, yeah, I did notice. He was and he goes like board. eight tenths faster than Romano, and I'm like, Damn. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Luca Marsalisi, twelfth, the, uh, the hitman. <laughs> Yeah, weird. Uh, base flug. <laughs> I, I don't think he's Italian. So. Ba- base flug thirteenth. <laughs> Better base than his future ride. Smoked Ferry in the heat race. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Better than and his future. He his but... brake lever up or something, and mm-hmm. Ferry just went off the track into the into the wall. <laughs> That's awesome. Better better than his futures races have gone. Yeah. Uh... I kind of watched him a little bit in practice. Like he looked okay. You would think wasn't, you would think he'd be better either. in the whoops. You would really think that that kid would just shift forth and just hammer through as tall I as mean, he is. Maybe after watching him ride, and this sounds super disrespectful, but kinda I, reminds me of Kyle Brown a little bit. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that guy. Frogger. He was just kind of like over like that a little bit. Frogger. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see why the manufacturers <laughs> went with Juju, the, the Juju route. And yeah. Then who, who else was he pissed at for a while? Everyone. Who took the Team Green ride for him? Oh, uh... Because they grabbed somebody for Team Green instead of him, too. Hmm. Shit. Oh, God, I don't know who it was. It wasn't there was Timmerman, Janik. There was Timmerman, Janik, Drew Adams, but they were all on Cowies. Gordons were already on Cowies at that point. Uh, I, I don't know. There's somebody, somebody though, and there was right. some animosity there for sure. Interesting. Yeah, well, he hasn't done anything. Like... His his big highlight in the last couple of years outside before last night was that moto that he won the first moto of the week at Loretta's and he got off on the podium and he, you literally like texted me when you were talking about this and you're like this kid he's gonna die because his like tongue is literally touching the ground because he can't talk because mm-hmm. he's out of breath. Um, Nick Romano fourteenth he looked pretty decent all day. It was funny because him and Ferry were in B practice. I was like checking boxes of like okay I don't have to rant about this. I don't have to rant about this. I don't have to rant about this. Five hundred and fifteen days since he I, had seen I a game drop. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's fine. That passes needs, the test for me. He just needs to make it through Supercross and get to outdoors because yeah. we all know that outdoors is where his speed comes from. Yep. Um, Cameron McAdoo. Oh, Cameron Sackadoo. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Cameron Sackadoo. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Cameron talk about his Sackadoo. Talk about his penis. Bro, just <laughs> look, fucking man. grinder, dude. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was 
balls out. I didn't even mean for that to be a joke, oh, but that worked God. out perfectly. He was balls out fast. Oh, um, how many pictures do you think are on Grinder of him now? I don't know, but Michael Lindsay literally came up to him and said, "Hey man, how's it hanging?" <laughs> That's awesome. Like he, <laughs> and he's been a really good sport about it. His so wife's been his cool wife, about dude. it. Yeah, so that his like, wife's like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no. You see her Instagram post where she's like, "What can I say? He's nuts." <laughs> yeah. I mean that first turn pileup was pretty nuts. It was, and dude. And so, who was the Honda kid? Was it was it Colin Park? That was in the. They down took out the, Hammaker. No, uh, I don't know. Hammaker just had wait, Portner hold syndrome on. and didn't let off. Did Vince Freeze race last night? No. Oh no, but he the, commented, uh, he commented <laughs> on the photo. That's where I got confused. <laughs> yeah. There, he commented on no. the photo. My it bad. might have been Colin Park because Colin Park Colin was Park way down. Was laying in it the first corner. It had to be Colin Park that hit Hammaker. Colin Park had a rough night. We'll talk about him too oh, in a second. God, he here. folded himself good. Bro, uh, yeah, uh, man. No. Uh, McAdoo dude, Sackers, uh, Mister Mister Sackers, like Sackerdoo. He is all over social media right How? now. There's tons of dick jokes. There's tons it. of ball sack there's literally, jokes. Like, there's literally the video from his chick of him just being like, uh, and she's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just looking at pictures and videos of my nuts hanging out. Hang on. Let me, let me go on. At least on the, they didn't all get the front shot. She's like, she's oh, like, oh, I she, got the front <laughs> shot. And let me stop. Look, man, <laughs> oh I'm going to, I'm going to go this direction. I got the picture of the front shot. Who, get, who, who, who has that? And, in Detroit, it's cold, like blah blah blah. <laughs> like when I ride, it's not it's cold in that state. Well, I mean, I'm, I guess a, I'm not. Look, no, man, no, for the weather and riding a dirt bike, like he's pretty well off. <laughs> <laughs> like he's definitely got. This an, is what the show has come to. We talk about bar show, we talk about jet and oh, and now we're talking about McAdoo. His he fork, just look, his fork tube was aching. <laughs> <laughs> his fork tube was aching. <laughs> This is awesome. This is hang awesome. On, I hate what this. a great, what a look, great. Look, look, hang on. Just wait till you oh, see all the comments on not, The Twitter is blowing up. So. I was about to say, do not put that on camera. Well, right there. <laughs> yeah. He does have a shaven nut. Dude, everybody. He needs a Manscaped sponsorship dude, everybody, for sure. Should. Everybody on all the message boards were like, that's not real. They're like, that kid's nuts are too oh, shaven. Nope, nope. Don't worry. I got that covered in here, too. <laughs> oh my God. So this guy says, this guy, first guy, first response is, Rooting for him to bag a win. My response to that would be, that would be nuts. And this other guy says, well, the balls are in his court. And then this guy says, I thought this was an edit. And then I said, nope, real live balls. No AI here. That's... So uh, let me just say, uh, the first time I went to seat about something and could feel the seat cover on my dick, we would have been done bro, racing. Bro, he's got ribs, too, on the seat. I know. We would have been done racing. Right, I'd have been a- like, look, there's a lot I can grit through. My nuts hanging and, out. In all I, serious. Listen, uh, another thing, too, is I don't know how his shit didn't get ground up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, here, here's the thing. In all seriousness, he was wearing boxer briefs. How? He was wearing some Ethicas, and somehow the hole was perfect enough for yeah. his shit to come out. How are you not wearing compression shorts? Here's the thing. How does it get cut like that, and it didn't cut the nuts That's or the dick? That's what I'm saying. Austin Hot at GPF where just rips the nut sack open. Crazy. I he don't got know, dude. Like he when got you, lucky. When you see the girth on that thing. No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 dude, you, I think but it was a publicity see, stunt. He put that hole there. Look, when you see the kind of heat that he was packing, like you would, <laughs> <laughs> you would think that... Like to rip that open, like it would have gotten do him some harm. Johnny you know Sin's I mean? over here. That's Jeez. crazy. Hang on. Uh, that was I nuts. also said. I also said those things correlate to his riding for sure. Um, <laughs> another guy made a. Um, is this, this guy said, "Is there a sack race now?" <laughs> Could you imagine? And then, if he- I, and then uh, he must have a manscaped. Um, I would have pulled in and had my mechanic duct tape my shit. <laughs> Could you imagine though, in all seriousness, if he would have hit the ground? Like, say he just gets loose in the whoops, bro, and just fucking you lawn darts. Then and you then see he, all the A star guys run into him because his fucking dick's just laying the, in the and dirt. Then, <laughs> and then he turns over and his dick's just like hanging. Defin- Can we move on? Definition of dragging his dick. Oh my dirt. god! <laughs> this one, Dude. this guy said, on this week's science of supercross, getting inside your opponent's head. <laughs> Can we talk about his riding now? Because that uh, um, hang on, no, he did ride well. Oh, hang on, there was another one in here that was funny. <laughs> no, he did ride well, but Sackadoo, like Sackadoo, Sackers. Like, uh, one guy was all pissed. He was all like, "Why do you? How do you find comedy off somebody's cock and balls or something?" I was like, "This is the most this ridiculous Amer- fucking thing I've seen in motor America. America. That time. guy, that guy, must be in a, a rough place in life, and he needs to just pull his pants down and have some comedy of his own and just look at himself." <laughs> 
Um, I mean, uh, I laugh every time I look at any, myself. Any of <laughs> you guys think that race should have been red flagged because of the no, way everybody was laying no, in the first corner? No. It people was, people they have could, made that comment. They, they could have, but I don't think it was necessary. No. It was sketchy going through there, but it wasn't necessary. And part of the reason it was sketchy is because, to be completely honest, I think Vial was trying to play the game of like, well, if I don't get my bike up quick yeah. here, they'll just red flag it. He was also holding here. himself because he, he was not in a good spot. Dude. Yeah. His wrist. But M- McAdoo... That was a good ride by McAdoo. Yeah. Really, really ballsy, you know? Just just move on. Hang just, on, this guy made a McAdoo oh, pun. He said, uh <laughs> I I'm, I had a J Mart update and he says, Those slams add up and J Mart ain't the youngest cock in the coop. <laughs> and I just said, Is that a McAdoo pun? <laughs> That's awesome. But um, no, uh Heat win for McAdoo too, right? Yeah, after yeah, Harris so. went backwards and yeah, yeah. he's not feeling it. But. Well, so I mean, good for him. He hasn't raced in a long time either. No. He's gonna come out and win a heat, but uh I'm going to be a little critical of Mr. McAdoo. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Do you guys feel he has peaked? Yeah. Yeah. I think we talked about this. this. Yeah, Yeah. I I do. I think his, I think, uh, I still think he can obviously get on the box and keep winning heat races, but. Is he like the new J-Mart 250 lifer? No. I mean, dude, he's making, he's making six figures, so why not? (laughs) Should be. Yeah. Might as well be. Might as well. He ain't getting a solid 450 ride. Yeah. I mean, we know he's groomed. Mm. (laughs) What the fuck does. He was. We know he wasn't groomed to be a 450 rider. He's just grinding it out, bro. Just grinding it out. Look, his riding style really correlates. <laughs> it does. It really. <laughs> it does. really does. No, no, it makes sense. Sense. Or, it makes his, so much sense. To his balls or his dick, or both. I don't know. He's like huge I, balls. I, I, well, there's just a lot of testosterone. He's gonna make a lot there. of kids with those. <laughs> All right, moving on. I hate this show sometimes. Nope, nope. This is great, and now we get <laughs> to go. Right. Now we get to go from one great thing oh, to another. It's no. your Isaac Nelson Designs <laughs> Deegan Danger Zone. Okay, so uh, Deegan was also caught up in that first turn crash. Get sixteenth, uh, dude. I will say, gritty ass ride. Oh, from those him. bars. Yeah. yeah, him and him and Hammaker, yeah. like yeah, dude. I tell you what, I am not hitting a triple with those fucking. Bars. No, at first I don't know I was if like he did to hit a triple either. Though. At first I was like, no, he did. Oh, he, he was did. hitting oh, the, he was the triple. He was, he was the shit. fucking oh, was riding because I had to cause watch him for a couple laps because I was like, what's going yeah, on? And I then realize, I noticed. The I didn't bar, realize yeah. that, and I saw him going through the whoops, and I was like, is this a fucking <laughs> SJO race? Yeah, Hammaker had the same thing except they. Hammaker had the same thing going on except they couldn't get his bars anywhere. And let me. It's probably because I saw Hammaker at the hotel. That's why he did so terrible. And let me (laughs) just say, thanks. That I have to give it to him, to Deegan. Great lapper. He he did get out of the way. No point was anywhere close to being in the way. He saw the blue flags. He would look around and he was off. Yeah. Like I'm out of the way. He didn't want to fuck it up, which I give him a lot of credit because it would have been very easy to be like, Haha, watch this. Like I'm gonna yeah. do some shit. Yeah, you could definitely tell he was he came in with an injury and definitely missed some time on the bike because he didn't. I don't think he had that balls out speed. That it he didn't have the balls out speed, but that swagger balls we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that applies to him yet. But that. But that swagger we talk about him having, I saw that. Did you notice that? You were there all day, right? And shit. Yeah, like you mean he was he almost doing, looped it. He, well, so like he was jumping some different rhythms, like in practice and stuff on his slow laps. Just like you could tell he was kind of testing stuff. But when he do it, I mean, he's doing turn downs and stuff in rhythm sections, not like over the triple, mm-hmm. like in rhythm sections. He did one on the sight lap deal too. Yeah, and when he did it, I went, okay. He's fine, yeah. um, but yes, you are correct. You could tell he lacked a bit of top end speed. Yeah, and intensity. I don't think was. I don't know. You could definitely tell that the off season didn't go as planned. No, the cardio is still there. But though. I wish we knew about it. The car- <laughs> You're not the only it's one. It's gonna come out. So check this out. Listen to uh, uh, Hopper's show on Friday, um, and they had the guy from Twenty Three Media on there, and they were talking about the Deegan injury and stuff, and. There is so is it a sprain or what's the deal? No one knows. I don't think that it's a that's a thing of no one knows because they were talking because that guy from Twenty Three Media being in California knows a lot of these guys who are filmers and stuff. Mm-hmm. He knows the Deegan guys. Major NDAs in place with them mm. for everything. There are he he's like, but one thing I can guarantee you, the camera never stops. He's like, there is footage of whatever did it, what happened to it, everything. And as Coach Rob kind of said on the show, he's like, at some point, it's all th- gonna come it's, out. it will come out. But it's just what happens here 
as to how do they present it when it comes out. And this works into the marketing machine thing that I want to talk about here yeah. in a second, too. But that is how they will play it. Of Because if it went bad, it's, oh, we had this major yeah. wrist and injury, if he wins, whatever. he's like, look what we came look from. Look what we overcame. Yeah. Yep. So that footage is there. We will find out. And to everyone who's in the comments telling me, well, he just said it's a sprain. Of course he just said it's a sprain. This is the same thing we've been talking about with hiding the injuries. I don't want to give up. The, oh, it was broke and I was off for three weeks. There's been speculation it was that whoop crash that we saw. Mm. There's been speculation of what if this happened in Cortez there because we saw a whole bunch from Cortez and then it kind of went dry for a while with the content from them. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We'll find out. Like I said, this will come out at some point. They're too smart with the marketing to not, not to, to do it. But we're just all kind of waiting right now. Yeah. Speaking of uh, smart with the marketing thing, I did really enjoy the opening ceremony. Opening ceremonies thing was absolutely it, genius. It, yeah. It really got the crowd hyped up. So for Justin that wasn't there, maybe some of our listeners that weren't there, mm -hmm. he... Um, so if you follow him on Snapchat, you know he flew private, which I, I think I don't. But I think, okay, okay. Great. I think that's, that's I think that's a game changer. Well, you can well we we, we get, can get into this here in and later um, in the show. Flex that shit. He was flexing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, got into town maybe early or whatever, and they bring out the SMX champions last. Um, so they brought him out at the end after the 450s which did was that confuse weird. you too when, it was a little weird when it, when he wasn't with the two we only did two 250s and it wasn't him and i'm like what the hell yeah it was happening? weird because they brought out anstey and jay martin we're like huh yeah um but anyway he's got a jared goff jersey on yep. and he's jogging through town and then it's playing uh well he had that vintage lions jacket too on or that vintage looking lions jacket uh, that was a star jacket oh was it yeah i thought he had lions one too no it was, he was rocking a jersey though but anyway yes, the golf he, jersey, he's jogging yes. through town like just grinding and then they got like that uh that tricky trick that yeah. trick trick welcome to detroit song it's all hyped up just playing into the crowd playing into the city vibes mm -hmm. and then he throws on like a lion's chain like like we're talking full-blown like cargo chain like like uh with a huge lion's logo yeah so it shows him walking down through the tunnel like mm -hmm. in the video and they mesh the video up to where it would look like it was live to where he was actually walking down the tunnel and getting on the bike mm -hmm. yeah and dude audi rode and it was just i mean just pure marketing we i'm literally sitting there with my buddy watching this and i'm going this is, this is yeah. exactly what we need in yeah. the sport. And if they do that at every round? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, and, oh, they probably will. And I think it played like it played super well this year because of the Lions doing as well as they did yeah, in football. Yeah, yeah. So that that helped. But if they go through and do a different video every single week, which again they can do yeah, they because they got an editing team. Yeah, cuz they know in, how to do they this. They got the tie in with Fell. Yeah. Like, then this is, I mean, he is just going to go I thought that next was really level. Well even I the, mean, dude, for God's sake, too. when's the last time that they interviewed a dude who got second in the 250 heat on TV? They needed time. Uh, they that needed was the J-Mart thing. J -Mart that's why they interviewed dead. him. Yeah. that That's, I mean, I'm not saying they wouldn't it have done that. It just worked out really well worked that it out. was him. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, dude, that that to me, I'm watching that. I'm literally telling my buddy, I'm like, this is freaking I marketing gold. It it, like, this is what... All of these other guys should be looking at going, mm. shit, we need to be doing this. Yeah, it was all, everything else was like your cheesy, like yeah. normal videos. Opening this. ceremonies is not what it used to no. be. They Did it seem it, really quiet in there for you? It was. They cut it way, they cut, and, and we noticed this kind of last year. They they cut it, they've cut opening ceremonies so far down mm -hmm. that all the videos are super short. They're not as cool. Which is a wild, granted this was different because this was on the big, this was on the big broadcast on yeah. NBC during the day, but any other time. Like, I don't know why they do that because they used to be, it used to be a time for crunch for TV. Well, now we're on Peacock. We're not on a time crunch anymore. Mm -hmm. We can go as long as we want on yeah. any of that stuff. So I don't, so anybody that says, oh, we're on a time crunch schedule. It doesn't matter. Don't I don't get why shit. we don't start opening ceremonies a little earlier in the stadium uh, anyway to make they it. Didn't, they didn't have any boom booms either. The, the fireworks. Yeah, really no. no, there wasn't you know? any so, of that. That was weird. Let's kind of talk about uh, the race though for him. That was a gritty ride, dude. Look, oh, this is the danger zone. So, we get to talk danger zone. He, I honestly, him f and I said this last night, and I get it. Heat of the moment, you don't know what's going on. You just got your fucking oh boy, first race. Go. Oh, this, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to mention this. Him too. and Vial, like him throwing Vial the bird, like How many every times time. Did he do it? Like at least the camera only caught it like two or three times. But every time he rolled around, because you said Tom was down for a long time, who's just fucking doing this, going like that? I'm like, bro, I understand. Heat of the moment, you're super pissed. That was the last thing you saw was a fucking KTM coming at you. 
why are you throwing the bird, dude? Like, it's, why? Uh, yeah. Why are you throwing the bird? Bro, this doesn't bother me at all. It, it, it just doesn't may, bother it me. It just, just it's not a look good look. And there's already people talking about nah, it. It's just a it's, it's a, not a good look, bro. You can say all you want. It's not a good look. Yeah. Get off my lawn. Neither no, neither, was, neither was neither was Jet you. neither was Jet confronting Ando, but here we Jet are. Jet Lawrence and Hayden Deegan are at a little bit different points in their ah. career at this point. Look, here's the thing. He's he's in the heat of the moment. As soon as he watches that, he's gonna go to Vial in two weeks or three weeks, whatever it is, and he's gonna be like, "Hey, bro, sorry, my or bad." Or he can go to his Didn't massive really. fucking social media platform. Yeah, and be like, hey, I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah, which is which is probably what will happen. But it, yeah, it's yeah. to but, me. But to me, it's did, neither here. He nor went there. the route of I'm gonna take my shirt off. I'm gonna pose on my bike and <laughs> show everybody how fucked up my bike was. Yeah, and how much of a warrior I am. That's okay, man. I mean, fuck, I do the same thing. So you gotta, hey, genius. I gotta ask, I, if I, I had abs, yeah, I gotta ask. If I didn't have so be all right. And you were 18 making millions of dollars over here. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you this because yeah. you've already gotten flamed for this for your quick reaction. Is Deegan out of this title? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I would agree. I don't. All right. He didn't. I'm going to take it, the route of going likely, but, but these not East, not r- but East yeah, rounds, yeah. we got a lot of crazy shit that's going on because think yeah. about, okay, so Arlington going to come back. That's going to be normal break, whatever. We go to Daytona. Yep. He could either win that or it could go horribly wrong because this is Daytona. And then, obviously, we're going to Birmingham the week after, which Alabama in March, it could be either a monsoon or it could be normal. <sighs> then you go to a triple crown. I'm going to try, since normally I'd be on the side of where you guys are at, I'm trying to play the devil's advocate, and I want to see your guys' opinion. So I, then I would we, like to see him in it because the sport needs him in So it, then after but. Indy is a triple crown, bet, okay? Uh, and then you got Nashville, which is going to be an East-West shootout. Obviously, we know the final round is an East-West shootout. And then you got East Rutherford and Philly, two rounds in April. Don't know. So I'm not saying that he's going to win the title, but since I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, I wouldn't be so sure to jump the gun and say he is like there's no shot. Um, uh, how far is he down, Travis? Nineteen, 19 points. points. I'm eight, uh, I'm eighty. I'm 80-20. Well. He's out right. of it. I don't agree with the dipshits that were like the way they were going in on you saying some of the stuff, and then like I I also loved the there was Bump one that guy algorithm baby. I love that there was one guy talking about what Ben Townley did in 2007 to Dungey. Yeah, and I'll just remind that person. Great stat on picking that one up. Ryan Dudgey was a rookie in 2007 in Supercross. Not really the same thing. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just laughing. I got on Facebook for a Oh second. my what God. Is this? Wait, wait, Look at this guy updated is a profile. Douche. I haven't seen that man in a long, long time. Yeah, surprised he's still alive. And we, that is a great photo to come back to life. Lindsay in. Shelton definitely doesn't like it. Can Easy. we get can we get back to the uh, uh the Deegan, so, Deegan talk here? So with him, I'm just gonna go on the other side. I'm not saying he's gonna win the title, but I would really hope that a lot of the people that were coming at you pretty hard saying the shit that they were were more of obviously they're Deegan fans, that they were more along the lines of it's Austin Fortner that's got the points lead and not letting their Deegan fandom I cloud wanna, their I judgment. Want them to keep coming right at me. Just keep coming at me all day. Balls deep. Balls deep. Sacker, sacker do. Real uh, sacker like sacker do we? But no, I don't. I don't think he's gonna win this title. But I will disagree a little bit with your post comment saying that he's got no shot or whatever. Nineteen is a lot. Nineteen's a lot in a short series, and with someone like Forkner, who yeah. probably is. I mean, pretty Forkner good. could reel reel off a bunch of wins. Mm-hmm. So let's put it this way: if if Deegan doesn't come out and win in Our Dallas answer. in two weeks yeah. or three weeks, whatever it is, and Fortner wins again, he's yeah, he's out of it out of it yeah, then. Yeah. Um I will say look, though, let's put it this way. I just love that it got ten thousand views on that for, video. For yesterday. all the people though that will <laughs> make that, for all the people that made so the comments. So please keep telling me how stupid I am. It's for all fine. the people that made the comments You're that stupid. like, yeah, when Deegan wins you guys will be on his bandwagon. You guys clearly didn't watch our show that well. We I, never jumped on that kid's bandwagon. I mean we never jumped on the bandwagon, but we also said we respect the hell yeah. out of they but everybody just liked to come at us, and they were like, yeah, when he starts winning again, you guys will jump I, on his bandwagon. I'm, I'm like, not going to be a Deegan nut hugger, no, but dude, the, I'm a fan of the kid. I'm, I'm a fan. Too. I'm a fan of Brian. I am, too. I'm a fan of Brian. I mean, I literally was talking at the beginning how I'm like, man, I might have to go buy one of those danger shirts there because I'm, it's, I I'm gonna think buy it's cool. All, I'm going to buy an all-fun shirt. Well, I think okay I'm too. going the all-fun direction. Yeah, man, I like his swagger. That's okay. I mean, I don't I don't mind it. The all-fun, I just haven't seen anything that... Has really here's the thing. Who would I mean? I wouldn't hang out with either one of them, but I'd much rather hang out with Forkner than I would Hayden Deegan. I, at this point, yes. I yeah. mean, me and Fork you don't want to hang out, out with an 18 year old millionaire. Me and Fork would hang out, and shoot guns, It'd be great. Probably, actually. I mean, I'm not, that's not a joke. Like, Drive around in his R8. You're oh, do that too. <laughs> Is it twin turbo? <laughs> mm, I don't know. He I don't likes, know. He, he likes, likes cars. Rock he, li- music. Hey, he likes he likes he likes cars, man. That's cool. Um, let's see if I can talk to him at Indy then. Um, but yeah. So as far but as far as the Deegan thing goes. 
there's like I said, I give him a, a ten to twenty percent chance he can uh, come back from this. But if like if he if he stands any chance of coming back, he's got to win. Right he's got to win in Dallas in yeah, no, three weeks. And or I he's got to either get on the box and Fortner's got to have a really. Good and race. part of that is like we talked about, he lacked that top end speed there because yeah, of. I guess the other thing, he's gonna get three weeks back. Yeah. So. It's just it's a rough thing to now the situation that he's in, which obviously not his fault at all. No, no it's no. a rough thing to come back to Arlington, and we know that that dirt is like literally riding on concrete. And then you go to Daytona, and then you go to who knows what's going to happen in Birmingham. But hey, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that Daytona is going to be a problem for him. He podiumed he was good last year. He got third last he was year. Good. He only he's... he only podium though because one of the guys got taken out at the beginning of the race he's either either way he would have been fourth yeah i mean and and let's face it he was good at those smx tracks which is basically very, what that is he's so. very good at, no i'm not saying that daytona is going to be a problem for him i don't think he's gonna win daytona i was making the sense of he could either win daytona yeah. or he could get 10th we know who he thinks is going to win daytona i don't know man austin fortner rides like that fortner might just walk away from everybody at daytona you know max you know who max Ancy? he's been supposed to win it for the last 10 max years max so. <laughs> he's been tommy gonna win it. al is gonna win since, oh, since the he new came GP out the guy. Ah, the new GP guy. No, Fortner's probably going to win Daytona. Fortner's Tom Biel did pass the eye test for me, though. For, uh, yeah, of course he did. Well, hold on. We'll get to him in just a second. So anything else with uh, Deegan there? No, bummer just the way, though, to have your yeah. series, series start Make sure like if you guys are like us, Deegan, we'll call us Deegan Realist. Pick up your anti-Deegan Deegan Club shirt we should have made that all the shirt. other people. We should have made that Deegan shirt. Deegan Realist. Deegan Realist. I've I made several comments to people this weekend uh, in, in the comment section of videos of... All we said was that the same thing his dad said about him last year, where he would place, how he would do, whatever. More stupid. But we're the idiots, so yeah, whatever. We're fucking dumb. It's fine. I'm just well, glad I didn't hey, get more. Hey, we have a podcast, and we think we know everything. I, I do know everything. Brian Don't worry. Is the, Brian is the truth. That comment is coming here. Brian is, is the way, the truth. That's it. Anyway. Brian um, wrote the Bible. Uh, so that's been your Isaac Nelson you, designs. You are instantly canceled. <laughs> Danger zone. Okay. You just got canceled by a whole lot of people. Yeah, you know what? I can get canceled all they want to. I'm still going to come and flip on the camera and no, make a I goddamn said Brian, show. Brian wrote the Bible on how to build oh. a superstar. Oh, oh, hey, yeah, it's working perfect. Yeah. So yeah. Multiple all right. superstars. All right, we got to get going here because we've been a long, long yeah. 250 here. Uh, so Gage Linville, 17th. Uh, Tom Bial down in that first corner, too. Um, I think you got to whoops. What? Yeah. It looked yeah, like he picked okay. some whoop speed up. I think he would have got on the box. I think he would have been on the box for sure. Yeah. I don't know. He didn't look bad, but there was just nothing I saw that overly impressed me all day with him. I think he's more of a racer. Well, that that's, could be. I mean, that's been his whole we, GP We didn't career. really get to see. Cause again, I mean, we also just round, said that about Max Anstey, and Max yeah. got second. So. I'm also very thankful that Tom Vial is okay because he flew about 30 feet. Yeah, he, it, that Across was rough. the front of about five bikes. I'll be yeah. honest with you, I'd have, got a little, I'd have been a real bummed out if his season would have ended. Right I would have been too. Yep. Yeah, he was holding his arm and stuff. And he was. was a yeah, nervous, I thought so. I And thought he's probably looking at Deegan throwing him the bird, and he's just like, I don't speak English. No, I'm not. No. I- oh, oh Whoa, we're gonna, no. We're, uh, well, hold on. We're, we're going to talk about they're going to talk about languages and stuff here no. after we get done with the two fifties. Uh, Brighton Carroll nineteenth. Kid's got some insanely long hair. Colin Park cut it twentieth. I watched him fold him that, when he fucking in endowed into the into the thing there and front flipped. Yeah, yeah, that yes. was terrible. I just caught the end of it and I'm like, oh my god, full blown nose pick straight into the face of the next one with the bike on top of him and never left the bike and yeah, like, like just McAdoo style. Uh, dude bro it was te- i was like there's no way he races at least there wasn't an over under and then well, he comes out they well, comes out of a night for him he was way back in the lcq yep came through his balls off hits the transfer spot his balls off he <laughs> he didn't he he didn't ride balls out but he rode them off and uh he that's defi- why his weren't hanging out of his pants oh my <laughs> God. yeah yeah he uh Jesus. <laughs> anyway, he uh, quick turnaround time yeah. with the LCQ deal. Already smoked from <laughs> trying his balls <laughs> off in the LCQ. God, I'm glad we don't have a show next and week. And then, um, dude, in the main, I think he was caught up in the first turn. He was. I, and I, he I think ate, that was him that started And that. then he ate shit again and then literally just left the Do bike in the rhythm. He you from, said it was a Honda, and he's the only Honda that like, oh, yeah, was to go back it was on, It was on the way. I was going to say it was all the way on the inside, uh, though. No, Hamaker got into the back of Vial with his handlebar, and it yeah, locked up the front wheel. Hamaker got into one of the Hondas first, dude. It was it was either going to be Colin I, Park I or studied this. One it, of the Hondas on the inside. Of if it Hamaker wasn't Colin, started, then the only like, other person is Henry Miller. That could have been. I don't know. It's hard. Like uh, I'm so zoomed in that like it's blurry enough that you can't uh, tell numbers. We'll go back and look at it. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, 
and then he crashed again in the main, and he literally just left the bike in the rhythm lane and mm. walked off and walked back. I, Bro, I he mean, is definitely not taking that veteran savvy from riding with Chiz. He was not VRM yesterday. I give him I a mean, lot of credit. I think it was VRM, but he was just had the shit end of the stick. He did. His um, mom's still super cool. <laughs> anyway, Big uh, mom guy over here, uh, Hamaker, no, Hamaker's bike got Dude, all fucked up. Twenty first DNF. Okay, he had so a rough day too. The, yeah. and he was good in the heat race, but like the practice crash when they finally showed it, I don't know what the hell he was thinking he was doing. I didn't see the crash. He got like either. the little step up double after the finish. He was trying to scrub speed. He literally was just oh, about to get that. over the top of the front wheel, yeah. and he just decides to go horizontal. Like he's going, he's scrubbing it, but he didn't really soak it up on the face. And he literally just got to the top of the landing, and he just decides to go horizontal. Kind of laid it over. Mm. Weird. Like what? What are you doing? Like you should have been doing that, leaving the phase, not as you're about to get over the landing. And he just clipped it with the front. Put it I, I'm just glad he didn't break. He was um, good. Yeah, I'm glad. No. He's, I'm glad he's not broken. I'm. I'm glad yeah. he's just beat up. No, and he tried I, to. We ri- need him. And he tried to ride, but like I said, those bars were just about as bad as Deegan's. Yeah. But he was good in the heat race. Worked yeah. his way through. Yeah. Yeah. Deegan brown. finished. He didn't. Yeah. yeah. Can we, can we talk about the the last place? Kid oh, we're going to here. So Evan hey, Ferry, he is okay though. Evan Ferry, twenty second. Is, o- he is, is okay. he? He is okay. Look, okay. So at first, I was kind of like, "Fucking pussy." Um, <laughs> then I went back and saw another angle what from the it. Fuck? He got slammed into oh, bro, that he wall. He got the hit wall. with the bike by Brighton Carroll's bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, "Okay, never mind. That's that's all right." Yeah, he was having a rough <laughs> man. He was having a rough day. Um, I mean, really well, I don't know if he was rough. He was just kind of slow. No, it I mean he gets taken very... out. He gets taken out in the heat race. Well, yeah, he but... gets taken well, out in the heat he race. He didn't get taken out. He took himself. Well, out. okay, <laughs> whatever. Goes down in the heat race. Uh, really, just didn't have it all day during practice, other than the free practice, and then he just you know about dies in the first turn. Who do you who do you think looked better, him or Base Flug in practice? Well, Base Flug ran him down in the heat. Yeah, I know. Um, but in practice, practice I was passing really the eye test. Much. I saw See, Evan I, have like I one ha- one ferry. I watched Ferry a lot because he was in B practice, so I didn't have to rant about that today. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in B practice with Romano, so it was basically just him and Romano. I was watching, and I watched Base Flug a little bit, but not a lot. So I don't know. I, I'd say Base Flug. He wasn't terrible like I thought it might be. I was really thinking. I was thinking this it was going to be, be a lot worse. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was okay. Like I said, like you said, got in, uh, that LCQ was good. Like he, he rode as solid as you can. But here's the thing though. Does that, does that, I mean, we'll never know, but does that crash not happen and everybody gets through the first turn clean? Still, where does he end up though? 10 to 15. Yeah. You think he does that good? I'm going to go, I'm going to go, man, I'm going to go like 15, I'm going to go 15 to 20. I'm going to go 15 to 20. Yeah. I'm going to go 12 to 18. I guess you're right. I guess I just look at it that like that. Yes. He had a lot of shit going against him and I'm glad he's okay in all, in all reality because I, I think the kid's talented. He's had shit luck with injuries. I like Timmy, but it's like, you also got to look at it too. Had none of that happen in just a normal first turn. Where does he end up? Yeah. I mean, if you take out that first turn pile up there. Who does he beat here Bright that I'm Carol? looking at? Brighton Carroll, Gage Linville. Yep. I think uh, he's very, he reminds me a lot of the Talon Hawkins situation where there's not a lot of results coming in, mm-hmm. has a factory ride, and mm-hmm. just going to kind of put up the results that he... I think he's got a two-year deal with him. I will look more for him, and I feel like I say this a lot with some of these young kids, I look more for him to have results outdoors than I do. I don't look for him to have any results, to be honest with you. it's This is an interesting experiment, and I'm interested to see how it goes, because I am not. I don't really have a prediction, but I don't see, know... That, I, I, I sound really I harsh, well. but I'm like I'm very critical of the situation as well. Yeah, it's yeah. stupid. It makes no sense to me. There's it doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Like he had the husky ride and was doing that, and then mm-hmm. they pulled the plug on that, and then he was just riding his own Yamahas. They pulled the plug on that. Yeah. For the triumph thing, which I get, I get it. But the what is he the showed up at those futures rounds, and it's like, didn't do what shit. are you doing? Yeah. Humble pie, it's, humble pie, man. Yeah. I I think he needs some humble pie. I did see Timmy yesterday. Did you? Yeah. I, like I saw him both at the hotel, and he was walking around like his McAdoo was swinging. Well, Timmy or Evan Fair? Evan. Mm. He was know. walking around like he had a McAdoo, and he definitely don't have a McAdoo. Be like Jet Reynolds does. Let's put mm. let's put it this way: <laughs> two titles. It it's funny that we did the Deegan versus Ferry video and like where they are now. But see, here's the thing: going into that video, Evan Ferry was, was on Hayden on Deegan's pace, level. Yeah, and yeah. now and then like and this is what one, two years later now. This is one of those things of like, is it is his dad managing it, and it's just bad management because, like you said, going from the Husky to the own Yamaha to then doing this Triumph thing, did that just 
fuck everything up because it was such a just like horizontal trajectory and yeah so, dude because that kid on that husky when he came out of loretta's with those schoolboy titles he was supposed to be the prodigy he, he was the next big thing at the time at that like point. everybody was talking about deegan because it was deegan and the mm-hmm. shit he was doing but like deegan still really hadn't done much yet yeah evan ferry was supposed to be where hayden's at now yeah. and then dude yeah. oh how the mighty fall yep because so. it ain't even fucking close so, all right. Uh, all right. Glad he's okay. Yeah, yeah we'll get to see what happened. Yep. Any other thing 250-wise anybody wants to talk about? No? No, we're good. That's great because we've been no. a long time on that. Um, all right. So that's been your 250 no, Race Recap. No. Brought to you by our newest sponsor, 50 Graphics. Make sure to check them out for all your custom graphics needs. Link in the description down below. Okay. Story time for you two. Oh, boy. No, you guys are going to like this. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me at Supercross. So between... The heats and the LCQs yesterday. There uh, was, I have no idea where this is going. Did, Dude, your, it, did your nuts fall out? No, of you? no, 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 no. My nuts did not fall out. Little sackers. No, no. This is this is the weirdest thing. So, okay. so, me and my buddy go get a beverage. We're walking the concourse because um, we're like, well, we got time. Oh, I know where this is going. I think uh, there's going to be a, a Mister. Mister. What? No, 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 not that. No, this is even weirder. So we're walking. So we're walking. I, I thought maybe he'd see Mr. Brennan. We're walking. Oh. We're walking. Nope, didn't see him. Second level uh, uh, behind the suites there. And uh, that hallway, there's like never really a lot of people, right? right? Yeah, yeah. The offices are in there, whatever. So me and my buddy are walking. And my buddy's big dude. He is. Wide as guy. a Mack truck. Looks like he's fucking built. He's mm-hmm. a big guy. Um, he's diesel. Yeah. He is. And this guy's walking the other way. And there isn't anybody else in the hallway at this point but us. Dude comes all the way across the hall, and I mean, shoulder checks my buddy in the chest. And then they look at, they we stop, they look at each other, and my buddy's like, well, you got a fucking problem? And I, at this point, am a dumbass blonde going, you two know each other? And they're like, and, and my buddy's like, no, I don't know him. And then this dude's like, you speak Spanish? And I'm like... Who the fuck asked that? So then I'm like, okay, they know each other. And I'm like, you two know each other? And my buddy's like, no, I don't fucking know him. And so we start walking, and this dude is following us. And he is just chirping my buddy. No reason, nothing, no idea what the fuck he's chirping about, right? My buddy is getting more pissed. And like, so. By the way, his buddy is Asian. No. I thought he was Filipino. He's Filipino. So he does speak Spanish. And no. What the fuck? But anyway. So so I'm still dumb blonding at this point, thinking that they're fucking with me, that they know each other, because this doesn't happen. Like, mm. no one just comes 20 foot across the fucking hallway the and shoulder anymore. checks it was somebody some he thought he knew. big Especially dude or two yeah. dudes, right? We don't know what the fuck was going on. But anyway, so he continues to follow us, and he's talking, and my buddy it keeps stopping. He's like, do you want to have a fucking problem? And I'm still like, man, why are they fucking with me this hard? So then my buddy Travis finally... Over here like, dude, they're fucking with my, me. Like, dude, my buddy finally moves... To the other side of me, like puts me between him and this dude because obviously I'm the buffer zone at this point because I don't know what's going on and I'm just like still ah, but super cross is awesome. <laughs> what right? are you guys gonna tell me? Then this dude's like looking at me, he's like, Hey, you speak German? I'm like, What? And I mean he's speaking different languages, right? And so he starts rallying off and all I can understand is like Sprechen Sie, whatever and I'm like, What the fuck? No, I don't speak fucking German, asshole. He continues, he's asking me if I do Coke. I'm like, What? No, we don't do coke. We just fucking drink, idiot. And then we keep going. And then finally, my buddy stops. He's like, he's like, I don't fucking know him. And I'm like, and now at this point, now we've gone all the way through there. We're coming out on the front side by the entrance. And I'm like, okay, he doesn't know him. And then this guy's like, yo, your boy's a federale. And I'm like, first off, do you know who the fuck you're talking to? This is like the king of conspiracy theories. If he was a federale, I would have picked up on it by now. I've known him for a lot of years. Trust me. He's not a federale. I don't even know what that is. A federale. Uh, FBI guy. Okay. Okay. And I'm just like, what the fuck is your deal, man? And so then, like, we're about to this security table. Gotta love right? Detroit, bro. And my buddy, my buddy is like, bro, I was going right to that security table, be like, this motherfucker will not leave us alone. And like, right as we are almost there, this guy finally turns around. And he's just like, watch your boy, watch your boy, and then turns around, and leaves. And I'm just like. What the hell just happened? He and probably saw the TLR tinfoil hat. Like, bro, and then we fucking, then we fucking walk up a little ways farther, and I look at my buddy, and I'm like, "You really don't know him, right?" And he's like, "No, I have no idea." And he's like, "But you notice how he ran away from us as soon as we got near security? Like, whatever he's doing, whether he's fucked up or whatever, it, the, he doesn't want security involved because that's where we were going." I'm like, "Huh, bro? Only at a fucking Supercross in Detroit?" I, I'm, dude. I mean, I have. That never is a very weird i've never deal. anywhere other than like a bar where dudes are looking to fight had somebody Detroit, bro. do something weird like that and well, never like, a super like cross. i was like i was 
following the story until like the language thing. And I was like, what the fuck? That, dude, this is how confused I you don't am. Like German. I don't get, like, where does that even come from? Well, like, like, Swedish. Do you speak this language? Do you speak that? Well, he asked my buddy if he spoke Spanish. Then he starts talking Spanish. He's like asking Russian. me if I'm speaking German. Then he starts speaking German. I swear at one point he was speaking Russian. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And you should so, have been like, oh, Putin? And so then we're still then we're still circling the concourse, right? Because now we're all the way at the far end from our seats. Oh, you saw him again? No, my buddy's like, we're going to run into him again. I go, if we run into him again, I go, happy go lucky, dumb blonde Travis is not going to be out anymore. I'm going to hand you my drink and my coat, and I'm going to want you to just be the most funny person you can be and stand there and act like, like nothing's happening because I'm gonna fuck his day up. Like, like, like now I'm pissed because that just changed the whole mood of the day right now, and we still got mm-hmm. racing. You're to about go. to throw hands? Oh, I was going to if I saw him again. Like we were gonna throw hands. I'd just go back to the hotel, watch the rest of the race. Fuck it. But I'm Hell just, yeah. But it's just like the weirdest. Get like, it up! like I'm just like, dude. I don't. I don't know what the fuck uh, happened. Uh, where that weird. came from is the weirdest weird. thing. Yeah, I definitely did not have anything weird like that. Happen. That was yeah. Cole's not throwing hands. I, yeah, uh, a couple of my buddies threw hands at the bar. They went to the tin roof and ended up oh, throwing really? hands after. Yeah, and they went back there the next day to take pictures of the blood on the street. Did they win? That's awesome. Oh, they definitely won. Oh, okay. So my buddy that got in the fight, yeah. Battle Creek guy. I've over here. seen this dude at the library. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> with yes. the punching bag machine. Yes. Top score every time he sees one. That's awesome. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. Maybe not top score, but top two. I mean, I don't fight because I don't know when to stop, basically. So I just avoid it at all costs. But, like, I, don't I, know was, how to fight. I was done with it. Which is weird that you're from Battle Creek. You know how to fight. I thought you'd be a little scrapper. Bro, I went to a Catholic high school. Have you seen this fucking guy? Dude, I know 125 pounders that could whip both of our asses at the same time that were well, wrestling. Fine, first dude. off, I weigh 208 pounds. And I would just sit on them. That's the first thing. He oh. would gator roll your ass, and you wouldn't know it hit you. Trust me. You'd whip your ass. With my nuts in his fucking mouth? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, if do you, you think, you think had wrestlers nuts, don't get nuts in their mouth? Hey, do you want to know the one fighting technique I learned that will stop anyone? If you pull your pants down, shit in your hand, <laughs> and try to smack them with it, they're done. They have will you, not have, touch have you. Have you ever watched Blue Mountain State? Uh, parts of it, yeah. The get- dude, the good dude goes to get in a fight in Blue Mountain State, <laughs> and he, he, this dude's like a pussy, doesn't know how to fight, and he just goes, "Pull your fucking pants down, and I will jerk you off right now." <laughs> and the guy's like dumbfounded. He's like, "Come on, I'll jerk you off," and he like just de-escalated the fight. Dude, there That's was awesome. there was a thing going on right about 2019. This guy was in L.A. He was going up to random like gang members in California, and he was starting shit with them because he knew they were gang yeah, members. Yeah, yeah. And then he just pulled his pants down and started running after him. He's like, "Nobody wants to fight when you're naked." Bro, I saw a video, and this is where I came up with it, of, of this kid. <laughs> you just saw it come up again on This my kid, like, getting, uh, try- they were trying to detain him at a store for, like, stealing stuff in California. Literally, as soon as he gets his arm, like, loose, he sticks it down his pants, shits in his hand, and starts swinging, trying to slap people with it. Stop, dude. And he got away. He got away. By so. the way, just... Anyway, Jesus Christ! Put just that so you unit know, did away. you know that in Detroit or like actually anywhere in Kalamazoo now, uh, the homeless can just shit on the side streets? So we did pee in so, a parking lot last so, night too. So, so we need a San Francisco law because we had to yeah, pee, and then we were sad because me and my buddy were hiding behind cars trying to do it quietly, and then we come out of dinner, and dude is literally pissing on the front fucking wall of the restaurant. Wow, this podcast really took a turn. Can we get back to the dirt bikes? <laughs> well, this is definitely intermission, so it, we're good. Interesting week in Detroit here. Oh, my God. Yeah, nothing weird Detroit. happened like that other this than is, my buddy being super drunk. Well, this has been the TLR Coatings Halftime Report. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so, that is a really weird encounter. Uh, dude, that's what I'm saying. Only in Detroit, bro. Only in Detroit. Uh, I guess. Okay. Uh, Did he have any sort of motocross dirt bike look about him? Nope. Nope. It, he was kind of like Mexican looking, and but like I it, yeah, but he spoke eighteen different languages or he at was, least new phrases. And he them. was one of those guys that came out of the tunnels. I'm not sure, dude. You think he lives underneath the Denver airport? To be honest, I think he. To be honest, I think he was trying to push drugs to people. When he was asking about the coke, and then got real weird once we got towards security. I'm not 100 percent sure oh, he wasn't yeah. trying to do that because I've been approached for that before in Vegas. Like I had a dude, I had a Vegas, dude come yeah. up to me in Vegas one time years ago, and again, dumb blonde Travis, drunk, just like having a good time. Is the guy's like, "Hey, you want some trees?" I was like, "Bro, what are you gonna give me a potted plant? <laughs> Fuck off!" And like just walked away from him. But like, yeah, yeah, I had one guy like weirdly like walk up to me and whisper in my ear and goes, "You need coke." Well, at least, hey, at least he didn't put his his foot under the fucking stall when you were in there shitting because that's a different signal altogether. So, what's that one? 
dumb blonde moment. I feel like it means so, you want to pull down your uh, pants and jerk him off. No, I feel, let's not, I feel let's like not you were. Direction. I feel like you were very sheltered as a kid. I kind of was. Like I just I rode dirt. You bikes. I know can't be that sheltered because we went to the same high school together. So yeah, <laughs> it was whatever. Where'd you guys go, Norks? No. Do we look like we? Were I mean, you look a lot like Wyman, but Port of Central, bitch. Oh yeah, a lot of coke there. A lot of. A lot of coke. Kind of an uppity school, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of of money in Portage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was the redneck of the school. I wasn't. I was definitely the redneck of my school. I used to get called the ghetto redneck. You went to Battle Creek, so that does not surprise me. Nope. I was was the ghetto redneck that wore skate shoes with my collared uniform. Interesting. Um, Okay. Uh, Let's see here. So we covered this covered that covered that covered that covered that covered okay uh, you holster. know what wasn't covered <clears throat> holster co <Stop>. reload rant <laughs> those fucking gigantic nuts <laughs> Dude, all right i just can't get over it. like uh holster co reload rant Marsh's here nuts are jealous look oh the, the number 290 <clears throat> machine yeah I thought he had some gargantuans. Oh but my god, dude! Like these things, like we almost we went riding today, and I was like, dude, are you gonna cut a hole in your pants so we can see who's are bigger? Because I think these things give them a run for the money. I'm not gonna lie. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyway, uh, holster co reload rant here. The whole getting your license for Supercross, qualifying for Supercross to be able to race it is so fucked up that I can't even stand it. You bring up Guillaume Ferez, which I didn't even think about. How the hell does he have his license? He race features. Yeah, like the the, the only thing that I would give a pass is like a guy like Vial or Prado that have proven themselves and have a world title. Somebody, Somebody brought that up this week when I was talking about something about Prado and I'm like he is a champion so yeah. he qualified which I, that's I been in so. place forever and that's fine I'm yeah. cool if with you that. have a title in Europe like I get it but like, like the, Perez doesn't have a 250 title no uh that Borden dude yeah like I almost think like those guys should <laughs> go through that feeder program and it would put more eyes on the feeder program they they honestly, though somebody like T- Anthony Borden if he had to go through I don't think he'd ever come over here because he is uh he's a multi-time French supercross Championship. Okay. okay, I guess maybe so. Then if you have any kind of champion of, of some sort in European Supercross, then yes, mm-hmm. I believe there should be a. Pass. The only thing I can attribute to Ferez, and I don't agree with it. If we're going down this line, the only thing that they probably came up with is, is oh, this kid raced a bunch of GPS. Maybe and that's it. <coughs> I don't know. Uh, and he didn't but even I mean, do well top at him. five outdoors. I don't know. He didn't even do well at him. But then where I really ran is Cochran's situation. Yeah, like dude, race is the futures race. Does super well. Won the title thing, but he was considered a B rider. That is fucking dumb. It's fucking dumb. And then goes to the freaking combine, wins that, but yet can't race until after he does the futures race because he doesn't have his four damn points. Like the only one coming in because we're and we're gonna see him in Daytona because mm-hmm. he uh, apparently he wasn't didn't feel ready enough to go at A two. Um, is Ryder McNabb? Ryder McNabb, okay. Canadian national champion. Yeah. But never raced Supercross before. Okay. So him going through the program, he needs to get dialed in with Supercross. I don't know how much Supercross experience he had up in Canada just riding a Supercross mm-hmm. track. But he is the only one that you could say, even being a past champion, you need to give him some time to get adapted to. But as far as this other stuff, I mean, I dude, think- we've, been, we've been seeing this kind of shit for years. I mean, dude, look at, look at fucking AC. Like, AC, I literally was... The, the year that AC went pro, he went from a Super Mini... He wrote a schoolboy. He wrote a 125 at Minios. Got stomped on the Supercross track. I watched it happen. It was a disaster. Goes back to Cal or goes back to California. Rides a 250 a couple times in the B class. Rides one A race. Wins yeah. it. He's got his pro license. We've made we've made improvements, yeah, but it needs the, to the, be more dialed at this. Yeah, point. I know. If we're I, gonna have this setup where we can have where we have the futures and stuff, then there needs to be very specific rules of what you have to do in Europe or whatever to qualify for your Supercross license where you don't have to ride Futures, and otherwise, you have to ride it. But this stuff like Perez, dude, here's the reason Perez has it, because he signed to a factory team like that. The same thing with Ferry. Yeah, and I, I think... No, Ferry, we, Ferry he looked up. Ferry has his four points. He got one and got seventh in one. All right, well, then that'll go to my point is, is that even if that were the, ca- m- the case, maybe... And I've said this for years with outdoors because we've seen this with a lot of local people. We're not going to call them out. You shouldn't be able to get your license just because you go to 9,000 of them. That, like if, you're, I mean, if you're going and you only get your license because you went to all of them, 
Because, dude, I'm watching some of those That's guys like, in the 250C I mean, group. Certain, certain guys didn't even get them all. They just yeah. wrote a letter. I'm it's, watching the 250C. Yeah, it's like fucking regionals. I'm uh-huh. watching the 250C group yesterday. Oh, yeah. And I'm watching a couple. Bro. I'm watching a couple of them. I'm gonna like, I'm like, dude, I don't even know if this kid would win a local my, B race. My, my buddy goes, so when we got to 250C, because I was explaining to him kind of like I was correlating it to hockey. I was like, it's just like juniors. Yeah. ABC, like that's the skill level. We get to 250C and they go the first couple laps and he looks at me and goes, how, how, like, do you think you could do this? And I'm like, you give me six months of nothing else? Could I double around the super cross track like these guys do? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like the same like, thing when we go to nationals when the dude who's getting dead last in the LCQ is literally a minute slower yeah. than the leaders or in the two fifty. Or not group. even making the LCQ. Which, which, yeah. which, but that's just that's just to me in my mind how ridiculous it is. And this is where we talked about like it, Supercross becoming more of an elitist sport of like the fact that it, a, a guy who started riding at twenty five. It has rode on a Supercross track now and goes, you know what? If you gave me six months where I had nothing to do, I didn't have to work. Yeah. All I had to do was ride three, four days a week, and I could go out there in C group for 250s and like not look out of place, not qualify for the night show. Don't get me wrong. I would be way down in there, but I wouldn't look out of place. It's once again why nobody like, takes our sport seriously, because it, you're not going to get guys like that. Fucking MotoGP. To, yeah. You're certainly not going to have guys that fucking do that in Formula One. Granted, it's different, but still, mm-hmm. I would say that Okay, if you want the example that in the Formula Two, the last place Formula Two person, still on any given day, you put him in the right car, could go and qualify mm-hmm. and get fifteenth in a Formula One race. Yeah, those guys, you put them on a factory bike, it ain't gonna do shit for them because no. they're just not talented. No, so no. It, that's just something that needs to change too. Whether it be outdoors, and it's always been this way, but outdoors and supercross, outdoors for sure, they need to tighten it up. Like yeah, a, like a guy like me could go get my license. I'll go out there, ride around in last, and look like a fucking doorknob. Mm-hmm. And here's but the I'm thing: still going to be out there. And doing here's it. the thing, dude. I bet I I I'd actually bet money that there are some dudes. Like just for instance, obviously our national red bud, where you're probably two seconds faster than some of those dudes there at the back of the pack in the 450 LCQ. Me? Uh, yeah. I if mean, you if you got back in shape and you went from where you were when you were on the Suzuki. Well, so so put it put it this way: I went to Red Bud and I. It was the COVID year where they let us ride the full track. Yeah. And this was on amateur day with amateur lines and all that, and they had the transponders on. I put I put in one good lap that I thought was good, and I was four seconds from making yeah making the motos yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, give me a, maybe a two second handicap because the track's different and the lines like. I mean, two, dude, don't get me wrong. Two seconds is a lot of time. And to then, find. It, it equals up after a thirty five minute moto. But, but bro, still, it, it, when you get down into thirty, that's what I mean. Thirtieth to fortieth place, like two seconds can like, happen. I mean, like, even if you're making the cut and being yeah. in the fast forty, like that fortieth place guy is still five seconds off. And I mean, we Tomac, you and, know there, I mean? and there was and when there was guys that I worked for when we were doing a, when we were in the A class, we would do the same thing. We would go to races, and we would on amateur day we would mark where our times were, mm. like to the pros because we knew at some point. And same thing, like two seconds off of the guy, the last, the fortieth place guy, and it's like, oh, two seconds on, off. An, on an amateur track. Yeah. The bumps are different, lines yeah. are different, but like, it's yeah. like it's still though. <clears throat> this is why because I, I watched a little bit of what you guys talk about the elitist thing, where for me I know that there'd be a lot of purist, and I'm a purist, obviously. We need to change it because not every Tom, Dick, and Harry, just because you go to every Pro-Am or every Futures... Or know somebody in the industry. Know somebody that knows somebody. I you mean, should be available because that's not... That's taking away from the professional part. Yeah. To be, I'm sorry. To, to like, be honest... It's like, technically, I could probably like write a letter for myself. You could. To be, to be honest, it should... Like, um, Supercross is a whole different thing since we're kind of talking about outdoors right now. Like, the, pro, the Pro-Am series should be the top amateur series guys who are trying to get into being able to race And also, on it shouldn't pro be B-Class day. either. B-Class yeah, should not be in a lot no. of futures. I understand what they're doing. I get it. Well, well the problem the thing, is there isn't enough A-Class kids to do it. But here's yeah, the thing yeah. nowadays, too, though, and, they, and you could have told me this 10 years ago when we mm-hmm. didn't have all the facilities and we didn't have as many Supercross tracks spread out the whole entire country from California to Florida to Texas. Yeah. Oh, we want to give them exposure because they're going to be next man up. Let's be real. Drew Adams last year, Christian Janik, mm-hmm. and Enzo Timmerman could go ride the Cowie track anytime they wanted to. But but here's the thing, too, with that. The reason they're doing it with the B-class is because all these teams have those B-class kids locked I up. I get that, yes. And that's the new A-class, essentially. I understand that. But so my- that's why they're doing it. But then, like, it doesn't make any sense because it's like, okay, so you do that. But then, like, you got Cochran here again who cannot make his pro debut now in Supercross because he doesn't have his points because he's a B-class. Like, it's such a weird thing yeah. that just needs to be tightened up looked at seriously and made full-blown appropriate and it's, just, and it's just not it's just not yeah and they, and really they have not. it and, and maybe they will the ama is doing some things i want to talk about that right here before we get into the 450 thing um but that's that's my rant is just like it just needs to I be like ama just just 
we need to Mui, Prater, all of them, like sit down and 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 get this laid out properly so that it's so Make that we don't run into situations like yeah, this. And I, I think there's I think it should be more than four points. Too, yeah, I think honest. they're starting to. Yeah, like twenty. Yeah, they're they're on the right path. They they are. Yeah, they're on the right path. I'm Problem is, is, but I see hope here in a, in essence. The I problem agree. though is, is there's been a blueprint for this for a very long time. So to say that they're making strides, no, no, no you're wrong. There's not been a blueprint. It's been all over the fucking map. Yeah. We're no, no, starting to get the mean, blueprint. I don't mean from all in other man or other sports. Exactly. And that's what I mean. Okay. There's been a blueprint in other sports. Yes. That we could correlate to ours. Yes. Because let's be real, we know all the top people in our sport talk to the other top people from the other sports because mm-hmm. that's just what happens when you're in motorsports. And there's been a blueprint on that end. Yes. So for them to say, "Oh, we're making strides," you dipshits. There's been a blueprint on this for twenty plus years. Yeah. Like, where, where's your head been? Yep. That, like I said, this is this is my plea. I'm ranting, and hopefully they listen to the whole rant, not just the beginning when I'm yelling about it. But they like, let's get this laid out properly because we all want to see the best people out there. Well, we sure do. Like, no offense, dude. Okay. I don't want to see a dude in the two fifty C group that can't even double the triple. If you can't, I don't want to see that. If you can't triple into the corner, then like, bro, we we got issues because doubling through the entire track is a me situation, which is sad. I, I, like those guys are great. Not on outdoor track, they'll wax my ass, but on Supercross, it's like when I can, when I feel like I could do that in six months. Like, don't get me wrong, I could not touch any of them in motocross, not not even the slightest bit. So I don't there was know. one dude that couldn't even step onto the table after you come across start. Yeah. I've seen that guy. He I'm did. like. He definitely needed a Coach Rob nutrition plan. I'm just watching him. I'm just watching him. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, dude, how can you... Not? I'm not even saying you have to go off the table, because that's a totally different thing. Yeah. Oh, no. But you can't even... It's no, literally, oh, no. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> a 20-foot gap that to going step off, onto that, that table. going off the table is tricky, too. Like, well, it, that backside was, a lot back was vertical. We'll talk about this with Anderson. When we I get have to a it. very good video of your boy Mitchell crashing doing that in free practice. At least he didn't loop it like he did at freaking A2. Oh, it's like pretty good. I'll show you after the launch show. Launch into the burn. Oh, that was bad. Oh, no. Oh, did you see that? Did you? Yeah, I don't think my, you talked about that. I did see that. Remember that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Remember that Tyler Bowers crash? Oh, uh, d- yeah. You remember that one? Yeah, that's yeah. what it looked like. Yeah. Like, um, he just got whiskey thrown. I'm like, bitch, what are you doing? I know you're a big fan of Bowers. Though. Okay, one other thing here before we before we jump into 450s. Have you guys heard about the AMA track changes that they're making? Yes. Here? No. Yes. So, there will be no more Dragon's Backs. Their whoop sections are only going to be nine whoops, and they're all going to be dozer built for the rest of this year. Oh, Dragon's Back's weird because you know it seems like so, they were just in. Well, never mind. So here, so oh, they took it away at A one. So this is this is me. Never mind. Giving the AMA some credit. So they are looking. Apparently, they have data of every time a rider goes down on the track and where it is. And so they, what they have figured out, Dragon's Backs are a huge point. They're trying to keep everybody healthier and keep them in the series. Now we all know there's way better ways. I mean, they we got do Dragon's this. Backs at the test tracks, so they yeah. need to regulate that. And, well, <laughs> it's a lost art though to hit a Dragon's Backs. That is what. And Steve has been digging into this, so I give Steve a lot of credit. So a lot of the managers are kind of like, oh, you know, everybody gets hurt at the test tracks, not even at the races. So like, who gives a shit? But I, I give it to the AMA and Feld of trying to do this to keep the stars yes. in the sport yes. here. Um, now they have said that the whoop sections could get longer they're they're playing with it yeah, but they, they didn't want to start it at nine yes. instead of starting at 14 yes of them. yes why don't so, we just go 10 and just call it a day well they they nine they determined was the more Based prime off their data thing yeah so and again who knows the data i, I have mean the not data seen didn't this. look good today it, it like there was nine whoops and, and we still and got just a high rag so jmr and the, dragon, yeah. the dragon's back is the only one just because of how they break down nowadays with the torque of the four strokes so I'm good with a dragon's back. It just depends on what the obstacle after is. Th- that that like was if it's about, a dragon's yes. back onto a step on step off, like that's death. Yeah. Or a dragon's back, like if it's one that's flat and off into a start straight. Yeah. Yeah. Bring them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But or here's the thing: stop making the landing literally two feet tall, but the takeoff of the top whoop seven. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Just, I'm dragon's backs are gnarly. I, dragon's I, backs I, have yeah. always been gnarly. I'm not completely against it. I almost died on a small one back if you're when they do, did the Soaring Eagle If race, you're going to do so. a Dragon's Back, it actually should be like what they did, what they were trying to do at A1 going across the start. Where it was like Instead a of bloop, making bloop. it like a staircase section, it's literally flattened. Mm-hmm. So you're just driving forward instead of up because right. we all know when they go up, everybody's chopping the throttle, the faces, the pockets get rutted out, yeah. and then that's where shit goes sideways. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not super sad about the dragon's backs being gone. I'm not either because, because that does cause issues. The but the nine, nine whoops, whoops is a little more because uh, yeah, we've already the over the are, years yeah. like f- messed with the whoops for so much mm-hmm. where they used to be a certain way back in the day. Two strokes were different. And then they got really gnarly there for a while from like 2015 to 2017, mm-hmm. and then they went away, and then they came back. And you're just with the whoop section, you're never going to be able yeah, to make yeah. that. But they're but they're playing with it. They're testing things. They have data. They're talking about it. I like this. Okay, this to me is a positive yeah, direction. Uh, like hats off to Feld and AMA for, for yep. doing this. Yep, I'm 100 percent on that. So, all right. So that's been the end of our TLR Coding's halftime report. <laughs> that might have to be the section where we do the halftime between the yeah the things. halftime report. We were pretty like balls it. out on that one. Uh, yeah, we were, man. Dude, just I'm fucking swinging, bro. I'm gonna tone it back on the look. Wee I wee came jokes. into that rant swinging hard, and then by the uh, end, I was just kind of hanging. I you see know, what you <laughs> did. see what I did there. <laughs> So I did there. All right, all right. Uh, four fifty. <laughs> four fifty race recap. I'm gonna tone it back, dude. We are we are a bunch of children. All right, four fifty. I mean, that, it's legendary. That was a, that was a legendary. The only set. other wardrobe mom function I've seen like that is Millsaps back in the day when his butt cheeks were just out the whole man. Well, you know, whatever. Um, all right, four fifty race recap. Brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well. Oh, <laughs> bad we change segue. It? Just like Cameron Mack. Bad segue. So no, nope, so no perfect we, segue. D- does McAdoo earn the segment? Ooh, man, I don't know. Nah, he's I just got a... We, can we just add him to it? Always well hung like Justin Barsha, Barsha Jason Anderson, Jay Lawrence, and now Cameron McAdoo. Basically, uh, anybody that's in good physical condition that yeah. rides a dirt bike. I mean, I've heard if you lose, you know, every, like, 10 pounds you lose, you gain an inch, so... These guys, they must... That's why. If they're average to start with, they start losing this weight for racing. Woo! I don't know. I think uh, McAdoo earns the right to be the Gutterwork sponsored rider. Okay. Well, we'll make McAdoo the Gutterwork sponsored rider here. Then, if you guys want to see it, there will be pictures. I just want to talk. I just, just, DM, about the, just DM the, like, Cole. Gutterworks, He's got the pictures. Gutterworks does uh, great downspouts. Wow. <laughs> That was, <laughs> dude. I gotta pee. I can't keep laughing like this because I'm gonna piss myself. Accidentally. All right, let's get through this 450s. All right. Uh, so Jet whole shot leads, manages. My buddy was standing there. As soon as he went to the lead, there, I said, "Watch this. It's over. He's gonna go three to five seconds out and manage it from there." And I shit you not, I kept pointing to him, and I was like, "Look, two and a half. Look, three. Look, four and a half." And he's like, "Damn, dude. Like, good call." Um, this is exactly what he does. This is, is what, well, this is kind of yeah, what... Just, 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 you just needed a start. This just is, well, exactly. This is kind of... this. I mean, that's the thing. This is kind of like what everybody has done so far this year that's gotten mm-hmm. a start. Like, I, you, I, we were watching the weed show, Dazzy. Uh, it was a good... I mean, you got the start, but like until he comes from seventh, nobody's going to come from seventh and win. Like, hey, we just... Look, we've, I just like to point out, we are undefeated. In a dry In stadium. a dry 20-minute moto. Undefeated. Still couldn't pull it together in those triple crown races, but yeah, and we won but he's undefeated and everything. But he's undefeated triple triple and everything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. One point everybody's down. Just, everybody's just digging for him. Yeah, I know. Everybody's back on. Did it. Did not get booed yesterday. No, and I was listening for that. Did not get booed. Look, a lot honestly, of cheers were Plessinger though. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. lo- it it really doesn't surprise me because like, remember we had this conversation after San Diego. <laughs> Would we really know anything? And I said we wouldn't know anything until we got to Dyke Daytona. And I still don't think I know anything because what he did last night is what is actually happening. I'm not. I'm not classifying that we know anything yet. No, we gotta get no, through next week and then because we might next know week he could get a sixth place start and yeah. get third, and then that's the end of it because nobody's. It, yeah, it wasn't a flawless ride by no, any means either. No, like, no, he, he made some loose. big mistakes in mm-hmm. that other rhythm lane. Yep. He did. He did what he needed to do and what he did all of outdoors. He got a f- start. He sprinted away. Had a clear track to run his lines. Conserved energy, and then if Chase would have made a push, he'd had a little bit more in the tank. And he would have done what he always did, or all of outdoors, pretty much his entire career up to this point. It's just, I don't know anything, because that's what he did at A1, and that's kind of what we've seen from anybody that's got to start in this class. This is this is honestly what I, <clears throat> what I think will, I will honestly bet, they've been working starts here, because... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the way the way it's basically start cross at this point, there's no way that that's not their main focus here. No, but like I said, if he goes if he goes to freaking Glendale this weekend and he gets a sixth place start, you're not going to convince right. me that I he's going to win. You get out of the box for sure. But you're not going to convince me that if he gets a sixth place start and Sexton's out front, that he's going to run him down because it's just not going to happen. If he does, though, does that change your opinion on how the rest of this series is going to go? If he if he does, but we're talking about hypotheticals, and there's no there's no proof that he's going to. I, I'm not saying there's, there's no proof, proof that anybody's saying, going to. I'm not saying there's proof that anybody's going to do it. I'm just saying, if for some reason here 
Glendale, Dallas, I saw him whatever. at Triple Crown. I saw him at Triple Crown have a 12 minutes to run down Eli, and he couldn't. No. I just don't see it happening. 12 isn't 20 plus 1. That's all. 12 with a clear track in your Jet Lawrence is still 12 with a clear track right. in your Jet Lawrence. Okay, but it's still not 20 plus 1. He wasn't catching him. So what was going to happen? You think that if he had Cooper, 20 in that main, he would have caught him? Cooper Webb didn't catch him either, but we all know that Cooper Webb comes on those last eight minutes. So I'm just I'm just going hypothetical here, man. Like okay, if, so, like so if you, he does that. So if, do you believe that he, if that had been a 20-minute main, he'd have caught Eli? I don't know. Maybe. W- what data? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go with he crashed in the whoop, so no. <laughs> Well, that's probably true too. I just I don't but. see it. I don't see it. I, I see I see Jet if he gets a if he gets mm-hmm. starts, he wins. If he doesn't, then he doesn't win. Just like everybody else. If you get a outside of getting a third place start, I I don't think anybody, if they get worse than a fifth place start, wins a race this we year. We don't. We just don't really know yet. We're, no, we're we still don't. figuring no, we don't. this out. We don't. The so. two the two uh mud races were a real quagmire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, if that hypothetical situation happens here in the next couple of rounds, either Glendale or Dallas in a few weeks here, where he where he gets a bad start and then comes through. This series all of a sudden goes back to the way it was after he won a one of like, oh, shit, this is going to get boring because at that point, then it's like for he, sure he is. He's but I can also guy. tell you that Chase Sexton could get a start and everybody else doesn't. And he yeah. does the same uh, thing. Yeah, I mean, we're, so like it's it's basically just. Inserting Jet's name. Yeah. I could say that for everybody else. I could tell you right now that if Cooper Webb gets a start last night with the way he was riding, he wins. Cooper Webb was good. I just, we'll get I, to him in a sec. I but. don't I don't know I still don't know anything because none of these guys have been able to get worse than a second place start and win a main. No, but none it, of them have. And, everybody and, who's gotten the start is one. Yeah, so. and, it, and it doesn't matter if it's Jet or not. And I'd say the same thing if, if Eli would have rode like he did in that last main last night at uh A two. It doesn't matter because none of them yet again have proven that if they get anything worse than a second place start, mm-hmm. they win a race. Yeah, and and we all know that none of them are going to get a start every race. Yeah, Jet Lawrence it's is going to get another bad start. Sexton is going to get another bad start. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of fact. You can test all you want and do starts, but it's it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, Daytona is the only race where I could be like, yeah, I could see it. I could see one of these guys coming through the pack because it's Daytona. Maybe not on that one line of this track. But isn't the track supposed to be a lot different this year, though? I don't remember. Yeah, uh, if they move the sprinkler heads, then yeah, maybe. Uh-oh. Look, I don't know. He's the first guy to win two races this year here. Um, like I said, he's won both of the dry twenty minute ones, so that's cool. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying we're right here in this title, though, one point down. Um, yeah, I, I think I know I'm jumping ahead, but I think this title fight comes down to I think Plessinger is going to slide out, out of here a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a Jet Cooper and uh, a Sexton battle. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Um, Sexton got second. He did what he needed to do and not throw it away. Yeah, I mean, I'll be, I'll be uh, really honest. It, it, that 450 main was so boring that like I, I wasn't really paying attention. Really got home did you really? I was. They were really honing in on where Cooper and because when Kenny's when he got into third and he stalled out because mm-hmm. they were really focusing on him, especially with how good he was getting through the whoops, and then they just kind of moved because he was not making any time on Chase, and then I, they really I, honed in yeah. on AP and Coop. Well, I do want to point out uh, Kenny had the fastest lap in that main. Yes, yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all, dude. He was and, on it, and you know who? What it's weird. Hmm. Eli had the second fastest lap in the Ken, main. Kenny got third place, by the way, everybody. We're, since yeah, we're yeah. kind of going through um, both of them here, because there's there's not a lot to talk about here. This was kind of like they start it was and boring. then it was they so just kind of all finished where they yeah. started. Like you know, somebody somebody made the made a point of this, and we talk about this all the time of the new generation and the way Jet's going to win, and if he you know breaks all these records, hypothetical, like the way he rides as opposed to like Ricky and Stu. And we differ on this, but I think you would agree. It is a bummer that these guys have gotten to the point that they've overanalyzed and gotten so calculated because I'm here to tell you, Chase, I'm not knocking. He needed he did what he needed to do. He's mm-hmm. got the point lead by one last year. Let's be real. He probably would have thrown that away easily. 100%. Yeah, he's if, riding this, his own if, he, if you rewind even to 2012, and that's RV in second, win or not, RV tries to go after Jet Lawrence. Yeah. And then you can go back even further, obviously, with to Stu and Ricky and Chad. So we talk about this, and guys are, you know, they're staying healthy and they're doing what they need to do for their own careers. They're getting a lot of paid yeah, a lot this, of money. This started yeah, with just, this started you, game with Dungey. But see, he, but you guys, you talk about the boringness. Mm-hmm. And this is where I'll counter with you that with that generation was not boring. Because no. if that's RV, if that's RV, well, RV runs whether RV wins or hits the deck. I don't know. I was at the end of that. I, I kind of was at the tail end because I got back into you this like 2014. He goes after him. 
Whether made, he lawn darts so, or not. So Stu, so Stu would have made it interesting, yeah, because he would have gone after him, but he would have lawn darted. That's the thing. But and it like, would have been a hell of a lot more interesting it, than what but, happened last night. But I think outside of him lawn darting, it, it, you know, it's like the start of the 250. Like, the start of that 250 race is what made that 250 main even remotely interesting outside of that and i saw this in this those goes back early, to Barsha and Baggett. i saw those i saw this in those early years uh when i was back into it here in 14 15 that kind of time there were races i went to also where i was like man this is fucking boring like halfway and like yesterday it got there was eight minutes left in that 450 main and my buddy looked at me he's like this is boring now and i'm like yeah this is not an exciting I'm, main i'm sorry i'm just here to tell you and and i respect it, the it way was guys the track are yesterday man there was nowhere to make time but i I still say, though, you take the guys of, of the yesteryear and whether they catch them and make something happen or hit the deck, those races, they weren't boring because the guys actually were willing to lay it out in line. Once again, different time, different way of making money, whatever. But that's Stu, that's Ricky, I that's mean, Chad, it, that's RV, that's you talk about the 250s, that's Barsha when he was winning all those titles. Yeah, I mean... They it, go after him. I mean, you're not wrong, but at the same time, like the only thing that made that that would make that exciting, because everything else was going to be boring, just like it was yesterday, there would just be that one highlight reel moment of like, oh man, he threw it away. Ah, uh, Stu, Stu going, trying to go into Stu mode, every lap so, would be on the edge, bro. So, they're just, yeah. it, I don't know, I... Like I said, I, I came in at the tail end of that, so I wasn't prime that, but My there were still races back then well, that yeah. I was sleeping if through. RV, if RV got a start back in the day, like nobody was going to run him down, yeah. but like if RV's in 10th and he's buried, my point is is that the days of dudes laying it all out to win races is over. It's the Dungy effect, man. And that is the one thing I hate about this new generation. It's the Dungy effect, dude. And I don't... I, that, that, that you was say why, that and you're right, and I don't like it. It's like it's like the Ricky effect with the training, and then we got the Dungy effect here of just podium... Podium... Um, then, uh, I don't know. Podiuming? Pod, podiuming. I just, my point is, is that I just don't like, like it. Not throwing it away. So, I mean, yeah, it sucks, but this is where we're at because guys don't want to throw away titles anymore. They watched James Stewart do it, and yeah, it was cool. He went really fast, but it was like the amount of times he hit the fucking deck. No way. So we we just we just won't see that anymore. Um, so Cooper Webb fourth place so fast in qualifying, like ridiculous. Like, like it, it, I was shocked. Scrubbing shit. Mm-hmm. He was Little turn down. Yep. Uh, uh, weird front end tuck in the heat race though. In the sand. Very yeah. uncharacteristic for him. Yeah, that was. That's strange. what happens when you have a fucking left hand or a one eighty sand corner with rollers on the inside. Well, yeah, I mean he was getting through them for the first half. I mean yeah. they were they were all sizing up though in that free practice and stuff where they were coming out of that roller before you entered the corner and they Jumping were trying to into double it. into Jumping. the apex. Yeah, there was well, they, Deegan they and, were, and then were they doing fixed it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then they, they also realized it, they, they couldn't. To... They actually couldn't get the bike planted at the apex. Yeah, that... rocks and planting that bike in the outside was something to watch. Though. That uh, yeah, that sand. They didn't water the sand enough though. That, it was super loose. Tom was talking about that in the qualifying show yesterday. We, how we dry it was. Over rocks and, but what? Oh well, no. We, I mean, we were talking about Kenny there. So yeah, yeah so I mean, just third, like so. That, that's Kenny. Ken like, was super happy with his riding yesterday. So he rode super well. Yeah, he's always been really good at Glendale, man. Yeah, he's always been really uh, good at Glendale. Yeah, I could, yeah. I could so see him getting over there. So is Eli. So I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, yeah. Uh, we'll talk we'll about get to that. that. Um, yeah, so so kind of a bummer deal for Webb to only come out fourth with the way that day was going yesterday. I but he's still in the point. I still honestly there. believe that if he gets a better start last night, not saying he wins, he puts up more of a fight with Jet than Chase did. Yeah, but you but you are correct. We're, it's stuff is starting to separate here because now it's only the top eight that are still even remotely in yeah. this. Once you get to eighth and or once you get to ninth and tenth, they're like. 39 points out or something already so they're they're done um but the top eight are still in it so we'll see where we're at once we get through glendale here as to how that's working out um jason anderson gets fifth dude that heat race with jet i i don't understand what the hell he was doing super impressed of those boys riding it clean they did. I don't think they're. I don't think that was anything. That was no. Like no. Before when the whole incident happened, there was no dirty riding. And and the and the thing is, is that even Jet was like, "Oh, I'll just lay up in the top of this corner because I don't want to get taken out by getting the, smarter." The most <laughs> impressive thing I saw was Anderson cut down into the whoops, though. I don't know how he got so much traction. I don't know that. either. Yeah, that was wild. I just don't know what he was doing with that line, trying to go over the table to go 3-3, three, three, and he couldn't time it perfect because he couldn't get the he front end to dip. Up. He yeah, he kept know. landing front wheel flat and dipping it. I'm like, dude, why don't you just protect the inside? You have enough of a gap on jet. Take away his line and just go on off. Yeah. And what? Was it like three laps in a row he blew it? I'm like, what the? Yeah. I'm like, jet, what did, are you Jet doing? blew that line a couple times yeah. in a row. Yeah, because that landing was like vertical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, in the main, though, there was like that... Like, a rut and they were just kind of like popping over. Well, you almost like, but 
a lot of them, and Jet was doing this, he was landing in the pocket to go three, and then it was preloading, and you almost had to just be like, fuck it, just hold it wide open. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, all right, so uh, AP6, he was spicy in the uh, in the heat, heat there, really. winning that. He worked his way uh, through he, for yeah, the He, way he, through he the was one of the guys that was moving. I was watching him, too. He was moving he forward. The terrible yes, in practice in the by his standards. Yeah. That's, he, he's terrible in practice. Always, I, think, so. I think the confidence was carrying him a lot yesterday, but now I think that starts to fade here. Man, and he I don't just know. fades into that. There's lots the, of cowboy hats in the stadium. Lots of them. With the way he worked through the pack, I don't really know if if I agree with that, man. If he just stalled out in like seventh or eighth, yeah, he worked through the pack pretty impressively. I, I mean, I maybe, think, maybe, I but he's not winning this title. But I have to disagree with the whole. I think he's going to kind of fade off. I think if he keeps riding like this, you think he's in it? I think he's he's not winning the title. I'm not going to go that far. Yeah, yeah. But I don't see him dropping off mightily because I think he's just going to have rides like this where even if he's not at the front, he can work his way through to a you know close to a top five. So yeah. yeah. Uh, Dylan Ferrandez seventh. He was spicy earlier in that man. Was he? He was. I don't know. I didn't watch him much, dude. I watched him pass Tomac straight up on Tomac before Tomac blew up. Mm. But man, hmm. that hot outdoors is going to be so good. Uh, so also good. interesting to note, he is on Dunlop tires now. Good. Is he ditched the Pirellis already? Interesting. <laughs> uh, Hunter Lawrence eighth. Okay, he's he was just there ago. again. I didn't watch him much all day. It was nothing spicy. Didn't with have him. anything all day. Just gurgling his way through. Yep. Uh, Justin Cooper ninth. Question for you: Is Justin Cooper a rookie in Supergirls? Yep. Mm, no. Yeah, he's got an asterisk because of those other races. Okay. Last year. All right. I, that that was a question that was presented to me this week. I don't know how you can be a uh, to a rookie to the whole season if you want to be technical. Yes, but he rode Supercross races already, so yeah. no. You can't be a rookie if you've okay, already ridden. Right. Hey, I'm just I'm I mean, just asking like, the question. Like, like for you know, the end of the year when they give away a rookie of the year award, yes, he's in contention because this is his first full season. But he won't win that in Supercross anyway because they're going to give it to Jed. No, yeah. Well, Jed already won it, yes. Yeah. But so, um, but I just I was interested in your answer to that question yeah, because of so. the discussion we had about Jet. Yeah, so I, I just so. wasn't. Uh, no, he already rode four fifty okay. Supercross right, races, right, and he I'm did just, well at him. I'm just asking the questions here. Okay? Wow, that went really well. Let's move on. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Eli Tomac tenth. Ah, uh, yeah. Yo, there's a lot of comments all right, coming so through I've about. Heard, uh, let's. I've heard arm pump. I've heard the bike. I honestly think it, what it comes down to, as soft as that track was, I think that that Achilles fl- flared up. Maybe he's got know, the man. braces he, on the boots. I don't know. I don't know, man. It was weird because he he ran the second fastest time, so speed was there at least at one point. Yeah, must have been early. And I, yeah, I don't know. I don't. That was a weird ride. I mean, he's that done, was a classic he's Eli this, Tomac weird ride. He's done this before, especially late in his career, where he just doesn't feel it. He's like, guys were texting me yeah, asking, but, but and if I he was wants, like, to, if arm he, pump. <laughs> if he wants to win a title, he can't like with the boys he's up against yeah. now he's gonna have to he's still in it but it it's g- he's one of them that's getting towards that bottom end too of Look, like you, you gotta go win glendale if he goes and win glendale it doesn't matter like, glendale is a very very important race for Eli yeah Tomlin. like he's sixth no no so, he, oh, no, he he's, can't. He's, spli- he's spicy in glendale so this will be a very mm-hmm. interesting uh if he race if he comes out and doesn't get on the box in Glendale, oh, yeah, then there's then, an issue, and we yeah, need to yeah. start talking about that. Yeah. But I don't, for right now, I'm still going to hold judgment. I don't... Everybody, like I said, they said pumped up, like, oh, it's the bike. I just... <laughs> honestly, man, I really think it's as soft as that track was. I think it might just been something that's that Achilles flared up. Well, let's put it this way. There was a lot of... Man, he probably should retire comments, that's which is... stupid as shit. I'm yeah, really I know. It's stupid. dumb. How do you... Go- <laughs> lots yeah. of cheers for him in opening ceremonies. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, glad was, he's there. Yeah, it was, like, be, it was like him and Jet were pretty close and then ap was because here's yeah, the thing when he, he's a midwest what he's though, done so. what he's done it's not a lot it's 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 very it's very rare that a lot of people get to see a living legend of a sport that you're into yeah right off into the sunset mm-hmm. when eli's done obviously barsha and ando and mookie are part of that that's the end of an era any like, chance that's an end of an era right there any chance if Let's say the next few rounds don't go well and we fall out of this title contention that Packs we in. pull the parachute early here. I don't think that's of his character. I think he made yeah, a commitment. I don't think so. Okay. I, I don't mean, think Pops I, I, would let him do that. Yeah, I think it like he's a guy, like a good old boy that's going to he committed, okay. he's going to keep his word. And I, and I hope he does cuz you know, yeah. it's, I'm I'm more than happy to keep watching him race cuz like you said living legend literally racing at this point. Yeah, like when he can turn but, it on and he's on like that yeah. last race at the Triple Crown oh, yeah. is like it's there still. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Which is why, like I said, makes me believe that it was something the Achilles just might have flared up. And that's the unfortunate thing. It was an injury like that. Or it could be like like Stu talks about, like maybe little Susie thoughts flare up and you just go, nope. I'm not going to go that fast, which could be, too. So. What, a track's going to get that soft and that rutted? Yeah. Like, it's dude. weird hearing Stu say that because he never had those soft. Stu, did, Stu, Stu, only Stu has... didn't have kids, though, before he retired, did he? Yeah. He had one. He had a, he had uh, a son. I don't, I don't think so. I thought his kids all came after he retired. They both came at the same time. I know that. I think, he had, a, I think he had a kid his last year. His la- like, and when I mean last year, I mean like 2016. Oh, they Aren't may- they twins? I don't know. Then maybe. Well, I don't know. Are they that old? Yeah. I mean, they're old enough to be on PW. Yeah. Seven, five, six seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Probably 2016. If you want to count 2016 as Stu's last year, I don't. Let's see if I can figure it out. Whatever. Um, all right. Uh, Stu I'm goes down. Him out. Speaking of Stu, Stu goes down in the whoops, 11th place. Yep. Bro, give me that. Give me that thing. Hey, I'm going to throw it at the wall. Because that's like, it's it's not even panic. It's like throw the button at the wall. Is he also vying for that uh, Kawasaki ride? <laughs> I think he's vying for a beta ride. Well, maybe. Ooh. <laughs> what, Things what makes go you, way wait, worse. Hold on. What makes you say that? That was a joke. Oh, I was like, uh, that have bike's, you heard that something? That bike's worse. Maybe. What has he knows? done that allows him to keep getting factory rides, man? Mm-hmm. His Dude. last name. Yeah. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, in the heat race, he's the only guy that I've seen make up a lot of time on everybody. Like, yeah. He's got speed. It's just those weirdo <laughs> little bounces. It's a funny thing. My buddy goes, man, that guy with the long hair, he's really flying. I go, well, his brother was the fastest man to ever ride a dirt bike. Uh, so, yeah, so he's kind of got that in his jeans. He was like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And then I explained. Saw the dreads flying. Yeah, and I explained the dreads situation. Ah. And he goes, oh, all right. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, there you go, buddy. Yeah, man, I just, I don't, I, I with, same thing with Craig. My, and we might as well just lump Craig into this. With no, no, Christian we'll guy. get there. We'll get there. I just, I, I don't. <sighs> I don't know what it is, man. Like, all the other steel frame brakes seem to be doing all right. Maybe Husqvarna is just like the redheaded stepchild. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, Barsha's 12. Management just doesn't Speaking know of steel frame, Barsha 12. His manager, I'm sure he you listen to it. Yeah, he's like, give us up. a few more rounds here. He's still still getting back. I don't, yeah, once again, give it tell like Birmingham, maybe. Yep. He never comes on until half end of this half. Which he did last day. year, too, man. He came on strong about the halfway point, and then yeah. he started reeling off top fives and podiums. Yeah, when he was in Indy, just taking front wheels out. Craig, Probably should have won that race, to be honest with you. But Craig, 13th. Hit that button again, please. Thank you. <laughs> Bro, I just, I don't... <sighs> I don't know. Is he, is he, he is does he, not look like himself. Is he, like, back at Star Racing, like, just begging for when there Tomac was, retires? There to, was there was people that were making comments like that. They were like, oh, do you think when Christian's contract runs up at Husky, because Eli's going to be gone, does he go back to Bobby? Wouldn't surprise me. What team is Marzak or whatever involved with nowadays? Marshak? I don't know. Jeff none, Marshak? None that I none. know of yet. None? Okay. Yeah. Well, whatever one he buys into, that's where Christian I don't think I don't think he's involved in any of them. No, if he'd have been involved point. in anything, it would have been the uh, Dylan Ferrandez ziggy experience. Yeah, factory connection comeback. I, and who knows? Something. Maybe that. Maybe I don't transpired. know. Yo, Paige, call your papa. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's riding on one point one million TikTok followers. I think they can do some brand deals and be fine. Probably. Um, Shane Sins, aka Shane McElrath. I don't care anymore with Shane. Fourteenth. Shane's just gonna Shane. It's okay. I mean, it's Shane's gonna just, do Shane McElrath. This, this is him. He, he's just there. Yep. He's just. He's literally just there. He is uh, him. Yep. He is uh, him. Speaking, him. Speaking of Suzuki's, Derek Drake fifteenth. Good for him. Good and, for Derek Drake. And Chiz sixteenth. Wow, the Suzuki's is <laughs> Suzuki Suzuki. in train right there. Just, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dino seventeenth. Okay. Uh, he got into it with somebody early. In wow, shocking. It wasn't Vince Freeze this time. Well, it wasn't, no. By no. the way, did we hear why Vince and Freckle weren't there? I don't know. Uh, Moto Concepts didn't want to do the weirdo run all the way to Detroit. That <laughs> sounds about like them. I mean, they're going to save money on the transfer. I mean, if they run a... Save they money run on their business. They run a tight ship. Uh, it's not like they used to. Michigan's own Mitchell Harrison, 18th. Dude, gnarly crash. It's, Look for it. It's coming on the channel bro, here soon. Bro, I love how people it's, keep putting... Putting Brighton on there when he hasn't lived in Brighton in forever. Is that his first four fifty main? First four fifty main. Yeah. Yep. Well, he's only done two. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, wait till I show you this crash. It's fucking crazy. He supermans off the side. Like it's he's had a couple. I still of don't think it was worse than the bone. No, no, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. But it was. It was still the gnarly. Was a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah, that could have went bad. Like, dude, he bounced, but uh, that could have went way worse. Hold on here. I'll pull it up. Yeah, like one of the first it. videos pull here it out. that I got. Really. <laughs> What? You just said pull it out. 
Yeah, get your fuck, get your mind out of the gutter, dude. We're past that. <laughs> no, that's not it. Is this it? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Get out. Oh yeah, that's it right there. Okay. <laughs> Great radio. Oh, that was a smooth dismount, though. That was a very good that was. Sidewinder side saddle. That was about as best of a Can Superman. We, uh, let's watch that again here. Yeah, go for it. I'll keep running down the list here. Uh, uh, on, off, knack, knack. <laughs> <laughs> now, had that Honda Tough Block not been perfectly placed, that would have gone a lot <laughs> that worse. That would have been way worse. That was I a good was dismount. So pumped, dude, that's like the third video I shot of the day. I was like, well, my day's over. I got a, I got a crash, so we're good. Cade's front flip was pretty good, too. Uh, uh, I didn't see that one. I was sad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the video of him in the hills? No. There's a video of him out riding in the hills, and he didn't make the jump all the way, and just kind of landed and That's planted. That's a very the thing to do. Yeah, and he just planted and went over the bars. That's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did on the backside of the finish. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Just lands in the soft Is stuff. Is there a video sticks. of that on Instagram or something? Yeah, I don't know. Of him in the hills? No, of him crashing at the in the LCQ or whatever. Yeah, both are, both are out there. And no. it really wasn't even that gnarly. He just lays landed the soft stuff mm. and the bike stuff. Um, all right, uh, so Tristan Lane, 19th. Whoa, Benny. Oh, wait, what? He was in the main? Yeah. yeah. Got like, what, third in the LCQ? Yeah, I think so. I guess I didn't. Wow, I don't know where I was. Uh, Benny got 20th. <laughs> I saw him just kind of riding around. Benny had, yeah. uh, Benny had a rough day, and I'm surprised he even rode. Dude, he too. went down hard yeah, at a first couple practice. times. Yeah. Um, Things Justin, are not going well in the beta game. No. Justin Hill, 21st. Shocking. But yeah. hey, but beta's got plenty of Fiji water. Hey, man. Plenty. I saw that shit sitting out there. You know who else drinks Fiji? Oh, boy, who? Deegan shrink Fiji. Do they really? So you know what wow. I do? I drink Fiji. Still getting those, mic- <laughs> still getting those microplastics in. <laughs> All right. And uh, Freddie, 22nd. Made it two laps before something happened. Yeah, and you know what? Freddie Just shouldn't even made it. Number. Freddie shouldn't even made it in the main had Jerry Robin not Jerry Robin all over <sighs> Jerry Robin. Jay- like, Whoa. not even. Jerry not- Robin, Jerry Robin to everywhere. <laughs> so Robin laid an egg. Not even. <laughs> Unbelievable. Not even within distance of Jerry. And Jerry's got like half a bike length. And Jerry just decides to squid out and just... Yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, what the... F- what? I don't know. What are you doing, I don't Jerry? I don't know. Don't, don't ask know. me. And then I think I Freddy know. got spooked by the fact that Jerry, Jerry... He's like, oh, <laughs> shit. I, like, Hill is back to... Doing Justin bro, Hill things? Doing Justin Hill things. Like, pulled yeah. off, sat in the pits for like four laps, and then they left. Really? Well, he was in like 14th, 15th for a while. Yeah, and then, I, it, then I he used pulled my in, wild card. I thought he was going to get 15th. Then he pulled in the pits, sat there for like four laps, and then they left. I don't know what was wrong. Anyways. Interesting. All right. Interesting. Anything else Interesting. with the 450s there? All right. That's been your 450 race recap brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well hung, just like Cameron McAdoo. Cameron Wackadoo. Wacker, Sackerdoos. Sackerdoos. Sack it all over the place. Boy. Plays all hacky right. sack. Uh, anything else you boys want to touch on here before we leave? Question for you. Do you want to do an early show next week? I'm talking AM show. I have, I'm out. I have a flight at 7 p.m. I'm mm. out and I'm watching the Super Bowl. So, so I'll be whatever. watching the Super Bowl then. So no. no, he's asking you in the morning. In the and morning. I'm, and I'm, I'm talking like I might, I might be out. I'm out. We might have to do a phone. No, I'm I'm gonna film a show and put it up before I leave. Okay, because I'm do, not taking do, any of my do a, stuff. Do a solo then. Okay, okay, we'll just do a solo one then. Anybody want to come Saturday for not live shows, not reaction not shows? Mm, I think you should come. I already did one. I might be riding my dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be almost sixty at the end of the week. Yeah, here. Moto Extremes opening. Is it? Hmm. All right. Um, um, oh, go are ahead. we? Are we? Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Cameron McAdoo on the Monster Energy Kawasaki. <laughs> <laughs> At some Great point, times. though, do you do you boys want to get together for one and like all at the same time? I'm, I mean, I'm like, here can all you the lock time. in? Can you lock it? Because if you lock into one, I, I already did a one. If here. I do one, you do one, kind of. Because I already did a one. You haven't done one, but I really think if we're gonna do it, we all should do it at the same time. I, I mean, I'm here. I'm here every. Weekend. We need to get an L couch in here. So like obviously the eight thirty aren't that bad to watch it. Obviously the eight thirty starts are fine, but now starting in Arlington, the seven o'clock starts are even yeah. better. Yeah. Do you if you lock into one, I'll lock into one for sure. All right, I'll lock into one. Which one? I don't know. Let me look at the schedule. Dude, yeah, Birmingham. I, Birmingham. Birmingham's the week before Indy. No, yeah, I mean that's after Daytona. So I mean, uh, dude, whatever. I'm here uh, doing I'm qualifying here. I'm and reaction. It. I'm getting those reaction views. That's what I'm doing. Why'd you say it that way? I'm just like that's what he. Oh. I'm talking like I'm him. Sack. 
Bro. Did you see my Kawasaki fine. in the back of the truck out there? Yeah, yeah fa- I see your Kawasaki. Factory, factory bike there, man. Wow. That's that looks impressive. good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, Take turn, great. Thurman. Thurman Thurman? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Let's wrap this up. So uh, if I write a letter for myself, I could probably get 191 and race outdoors. This yeah, has sure. been your... <laughs> This has been episode 259, Detroit Wrap-Up. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Make sure to comment down below. I'm sure you all will, especially on our Deegan thoughts, but what's new? Boom. Uh, I will be back next yeah, yeah. week to do <laughs> um, to wrap up, uh, yeah, whatever it is. Glendale, yeah. Glendale where we're going there. Glendale, and then they got a week off. Yep, then yeah, we're yeah. off for a week. Man, that's um, weird to already have a week off. I know it what's is. What's the week off for? Because, I don't know. Usually it's like Easter or something. Couldn't get a doing, No, well, they haven't done Easter in years. They're and doing six a real pain in my butt. Yeah. I'm doing what? Six rounds, six rounds, and then five, five rounds. rounds. Which Just makes like, sense. And then for outdoors, it's four, four, and four. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, so there are some weeks. At least there's to sprinkle in some weeks off. In yeah. Sure. So, uh, anyway, thanks to uh, thanks to our sponsors, presenting sponsor, 50 Graphics, and Complete Racing Solutions, and then everybody else, TLR Coatings, Gutter Works, and Isaac Nelson Designs, and Holster Co. there. Thanks to all them. Links in the description down below if you need any of those. Again, make sure to get your Team VRM shirt or pick up your anti-Deegan Deegan Club shirt in the merch shelf down below. Just don't tell Brian's lawyer about it. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. All the, the whole jo- negative twenty the whole negative twenty five dollars. Like we gotta sell like four shirts or five shirts before I even make a penny after buying my own. So thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see everybody next Kevin week. Sagadil. Later. It's easy. <laughs> oh.